we're gonna do right here is go back. Welcome to the Bronx Hip Hop Oral History Project. Today is Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. I'm Pastor Crespo Jr., the research librarian and archivist for the Bronx County Historical Society. Today, I am joined with, by Clemente Moreno, also known as Kid Freeze. Kid Freeze is a legend in the breaking world. For the continuous head spin, his innovative power moves and floor work, a member of the legendary Dynamic Rockers Breaking Crew. Welcome, Kid Freeze. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I just want to thank you and your team for letting me be part of this and letting my, my record be shown to the world of my uh, recognition of my history and what I brought to the table in b-boying. And most of all, I first want to thank God for letting me still be here, you know, coming through a lot of trials and tribulation, a car accident, and I'm making my, my, my way back to walking again and actually being functional to actually I could tell my story to others and kids and save kids from what I've been through. But thanks again for letting me be here. I'm honored and uh, it's a lot to talk about. I'm excited. I'm back in the Bronx where I was born at. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I commend you and your whole team. Thank you. Salute you. <laughs> awesome. It's like I said, it is our honor just to make sure that we document B-boy history from the people that were there. You know, I was there. I was born in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We like to start out all our old histories mm -hmm. by asking you about your family history okay. and your background. Tell me where your parents come from and talk to me a little about each of them. Okay, well, my father, he was born in Puerto Rico, Ponce, and my mom was born in the Barrio, 116th Street, Spanish Harlem. So my father came to Puerto Rico. He met my mom's in, in Spanish Harlem. He, my mom used to go to school there. And he used to be hanging out in Manhattan with friends and his family used to live in Manhattan and the Bronx. So when they met, you know, they got together and uh, they dated and uh, they moved to the Bronx. And uh, we used to live on 1717 Walton Avenue in the Bronx. My father moved there one mile. That was the first apartment. And from there, you know, my sister came in. They, they, had, they had a baby, which was coming. My sister, Rosemary Marino, she was the first. She's older than me. Then after her, I came, Clemente Marino, January 21st, 1967, Park Chester Hospital, the Bronx. And we came into assistance, and me and my sister were just always doing things together, too. We used to even dance together. I mean, once we got dancing, we used to even hustle. So we got into hustling, and so many stories I could tell you, but this, this is a funny story. One day we was watching TV. They had the, uh, that Channel 11 uh, dance, uh, dance Fever or something like that. Uh, Danny something, I forgot his Danny name. Terrio. Yeah, we were watching him and we would see these couples dancing and I seen this guy, his name was I think Eddie Vega, which he won the Star Set Contest. Okay. He was on the show and he picked up the small young, smaller girl to him and threw her around the net and then brought her around his, uh, around his body and dropped her out and they did a split. So I told him, I said, hey, we could try to do that. So my sister's bigger than me, I was small. I'm gonna show you the pictures when, when, when the, when this came necessary that this is filming and I say this that's the picture. So I go to pick my sister up. She's big and I pick and I strain, not knowing what I was doing. I try to pick up and we fell. I said, that's not gonna work. And three days later, <laughs> what happens? I have pain. I'm like, oh. I'm like, what's wrong? I said, my I got try to pick my sister up. I got pain. What happened? I said, I don't know. She said, let me see. I had a hernia. Go to hernia, lift up my sister. And she was like, we have to go to the hospital. I said, no, we ain't going to the hospital. I'm okay. So when we went to the hospital, the doctor said, hey, thank God you made it. it it's real big. If it would explode, you could have died because the hernia, I waited so I was scared. Like, how much of my mom's is right. And then I, it started growing. It became like a blood clot. So they had to cut it out and relieve, you know, relieve the blood out and it saw it back up. But yeah, you know, that was the first thing I encountered, you know, my sister as, as you know, being two brothers and sisters having fun and trying to do something adventurous and dangerous. But... Yeah, that was well, one of the first testimonies that I recognized my sister. And I told her, no. Nope. She goes, you want to practice? I said, no, I'm not dancing no more hustling. I'm over with that. I'm going to try something else. So then, then from there, pretty much uh, my uncle, he used to watch us when my father worked and my mom started working. My, my uncle, Edwin Marino, got me into martial arts, Bruce Lee. He used to take me to 42nd Street and watch the game of Death, Fist of Fury. And I was like, whoa. And listen, back in the day, 42nd Street was if you don't know about 42nd Street, let me tell you, it was pimps, it was hoes, 
it was martial artists, it was guys with gear on, and it was just 40 second games all over, 24 hour service, everything was there all day, all night. So we used to go to movies, and after the movies, you come out all hyped on Bruce Lee now. And then you come out and see these guys with geese and everything, but that was after uh, doing the hustle, I started getting into uh, martial arts. And then from there, you know, you know, time went on and, uh, you know, I, I became, I was into Bruce Lee and I started working out. My uncle got me into working out. So I was fit and working out. So that's part of my beginning of my testimony. This is between 73, 74, 75 in that time period from right. the hustle to the, to the, um, to martial arts. And then we moved on to my next career. Got it. Got it. And, and before we get into, you know, b-boying and breaking, mm -hmm. you know, what, do you remember your father telling you what year it was that he came here from Puerto Rico? I can't recall that at the moment, but I could I definitely get back to you uh, with that information. Uh, no, I, I can't recall that, but uh, yeah, I know I know I was born in January twenty first, nineteen say in, in the Bronx, Parkchester Hospital. What year he came? I, he told me, but I kind of forgot right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I could definitely um, catch up to it and uh, let you know next time. I'll maybe do another film about something else. I'll let you know the year. But, uh, you got it. You got it. And so when you were a kid, what kind of music did your parents expose you, you to at home? Oh, my God. We used to have, like, you know, like the, like, Boricuas, you know, have the family get together. Olita come over, the Pene, the Pateles. I'm like, oh, man, we would eat some good food. You know, I was still, you know, growing up, I would, you know, play with the handball against the wall. I would play the jacks with my sister, the jacks, and pick them up, the red ball. Right. you pick up the, the jacks. And, you know, just very, um, you know, kid had, had, a, had the red fire truck. I got for Christmas, oh my God. You know, growing as a, as a kid, you start, you know, seeing life for what it is and, and appreciating fa a lot of family time. What he make the batteries and the food. And, you know, they play the Latin music, the uh, Fanta All Stars. They play Tito Puente, Celia Cruz, and and we get into our culture. You know, my father's like, Tu que Now, I was, I was born in the Bronx, so I was like, I wasn't really speaking to him. See, yeah, yeah, okay, papa, I'm Puerto Rican. He's like, you need to, you're Puerto Rican. You need to learn Spanish. So I was, I'll be like, uh, Spanglish. I was be like, yeah, yeah, dad, I'm a platican, español, but I'll practice my Spanish. He's like, no, you need to practice. You're Puerto Rican. That's that's, that's embarrassing. And then I started practicing. I started getting better. But uh, you know, uh, my family, great people. My father's a hard worker. Coming from the Bronx and, and and from from that year in the seventies, there was a lot of gangs in the street. My father was walking down the block and he had to fight some gang members just for respect. And my father was called Chiefy Clemente Moreno Senior. When he beat up a gang dude because he tried to disrespect my father, my father said, "Listen, I got a family. I don't bother you guys. I see you on the block." But so I, I don't I don't I can't recall what gang was it back then. But my father had inter, in, 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 um, intervened with this guy and he's like, "Yo, listen." I don't bother you guys. I'm about family. And my father said, listen, what do you want? He goes, oh, I'm going to kick your ass. He says, all right. My father took off his uh, hat and his, his jacket. And, you know, he had a fair one. He kicked his ass. And when he beat his ass, they respected him. They were calling him Chief. Hey, Chief, what's up? My father had to earn his respect in the Bronx. So that I, when he told me that story and I heard it, and it's what life's all about in the ventures of growing that as a kid. In, in, in life, you have to prove yourself that, of who you are. Because people are going to test you. And I got tested a lot, too. And, and that's what made me strong as a man to say, hey, father's name is Chiefy, then I'll be little Chiefy. No one's going to mess with me. So as I started growing older, I took that under my wing, and I, I, I took that for energy to say, hey, I'm going to make it in whatever I do. Got it, got it. Yeah. How old were you when you moved to, to Queens? Uh, I was about, let me see. Some, I, think I, was, I was between 75 Seven, eight, nine, something like that. Seven, right. five, seven, yeah, about seven, eight. Of, I'll go with eight. I was eight years old, and yeah. So when we moved to Queens, I was uh, eight years old. But um, yeah, that's that's when I'm, we moved to Queens. But my inspiration of the of the movement of breaking came from the Bronx. You know what I'm saying because that's that's where I got influenced first before I moved out to Queens and started getting more feelings for. What I seen first. Yeah, you were you were old enough to get exposed to. It. Yeah, I, I see breaking in 1975 in Bronx, Fort Run University, right around the corner from the Guardian Angels. They used to be the church. I used to live across street from the park. So when you when I come around that when I come from the Fort Train walking down across street, there was a little park 
and I seen these guys with a boom box. And it was two, two to three guys. They had some chains on, the name plate on. They had the gazelles on, the kangos with the plastic in it all buffed up. They had the fat laces on, the belt buckles. And I was like, wow. I was very intrigued. I was like, wow, what are they doing? And the music, you know, they're playing. They were doing a lot of, like, top rock, you know, shuffles. You know, not too much yet because it was started. I started seeing them dumb. Wherever they got it from, they started developing their the energy and their, their movement of what they were lis listening to the sounds and how the energy will reflect to their body. Because listening to the beat and you're getting a spirit coming out of the beat. It's like the Africans and the Indians back in the day, when they hear the music, they used to make it rain, the sun come out. So the same thing with break it. It's always, to me, it was always spiritual. When you hear them drums, it makes you transcend your soul to make body movement. That's what I approach uh, body movement, because you hear the sound and you create body contact movement, which was the art to me. So when I seen it, I was watching a little too long when I hear, pop, I got smacked behind my head. What was that? My father, get to the chandelier. I said, Dad, I'm just watching these kids. They dance really good. They're drug addicts. They're smoking pot and drinking. Get upstairs. Go, go do your homework. I was like, all right, all right. And then it, my father was my father was very strict. And I was like, you know, I took the slap on my head. And I said, all right, went upstairs, went in the room. My father said, came in the room and said, listen, I didn't mean to slap you in the head, but those guys are hoodlums. You know, they 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 they, they sell drugs. And I said, not that. I don't know what they do. I like they dance what they did. I was intrigued by the dance of the full work and the energy that they brought to the table. I just want to learn that. I'm not interested about drinking and smoking. You told me. I know. I know the values of life. Okay. He gave me a hug. He said, all right, finish your homework. But, you know, that didn't stop me. I'm like, yo, I'm going to learn that dance. I was, I was determined. I'm like, yo, I got to learn that. So the guys that I seen doing that dance was Ace and Lace. It's Track 2's brother. Uh, I think it's Lace was Track 2's brother. He's the one that I seen doing it first. Then I seen his partner doing it. So I, I found out later on who they were, and I found out it was Track 2's brother. Now, Track 2 is one of the legendary B-Boys as well. He's um, from the crew called Star Child Rock, you know, which is, uh, you know, a Latino crew that came from the Bronx, and they were doing their, they were doing their moves and everything. But uh, there was other crews, too, that I started hearing about, and, uh, you know, I was just intrigued by it. But later on in time, I got to know that it was his brother when we had a conversation when I met him through a friend by the name of Rip Seven and Four in the Row. He goes, where you learn from? He goes, yeah, that's my brother. I'm like, get out of here. And then that's when I found out that Track 2 had a brother named Lace. That's how, that's how I got inspired before I moved to Queens. Got it, got it. Yeah. Wow, so you're eight, nine years old, and you're already exposed. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lit, I'm lit. I'm like, yo, that's that's my, I want to be that. That's my that's my life. That's what I'm, I want to make that my life. So it's around 74, 75. Yeah, yeah. We went to Queens. It was 1975. My father got an opportunity to do a, a book binding company where he was doing uh, books, and he bind them together. And then he started fixing the machines. So he started, you know, upgrading his skills, you know, just to get a better skills so he could put some food on the table and got us in the right direction. He got us out the Bronx because there was gangs. There was a lot of dope back then, and people were just, you know, they're getting stuck up. There was a lot of stick-up kids back then. And most of the things in, in the 70s were a lot of drugs and stick-up kids. Yeah. So my father said, I don't want you to be exposed to that. We you moving. We move into Queens of Story, a nice neighborhood. So we moved to Story, Queens, and, and it was really not quiet. It was different because the Bronx, remember, it started burning down soon. Right, right. The landlord started burning down the, the buildings for the insurance because nobody's paying the rent. That's just facts. It's, it's in history. I was like, why is it about burning? My father said, yeah, because nobody pays the rent. So the, the, the landlords would say, oh, they, they don't want to pay the rent? They got to go. I burned the house. I burned the whole building. No, my fuego. And they burned it down. Wow. They said, I, I, was, I, I did some research. I was like, why? Why was the Bronx burning so much? Because nobody was paying the rent. So that was a reason why the Bronx was burning down, but nobody knew about it until they started saying, hey, there's 20 buildings in the Bronx burning down. Why is the Bronx burning down? He said, the landlord said, well, you ain't going to pay us. We're going to burn you out. And people started moving. Got it, got it. You don't think that's true? I think that's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that's, a, that's an important factor. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I, did my, I, did, I did a lot of history learning, too. When I was younger, I wasn't really learning as much that I, that I should have because I was into breaking. I was trying educate myself to be that that, that next great b-boy and i learned a lot from him especially when i came from the bronx and it was just uh you know it was it was a blessing to god to actually get this uh this energy of of dance that they call breaking or uh, b-boying and uh you know actually was a part of the whole beginning and i seen it grow and what it is today is like 
I was there when it first started and I seen it all. And I seen the transition from the moves to the power moves to the Olympics, you know, like decades I seen it from here to here to is it today. But I'm just so honored that, you know, I'm still alive, I can talk and you know, reach out to kids and talk to know about my story and say, hey, don't do drugs, stay in school and I have a backup plan. Because a lot of kids are younger, they're breaking now. But listen, it's like it's like I told the kids. When you become a b-boy, it's just like a basketball player and, and a baseball player. Once you get hurt, you need plan B. Now, you, if you really mess up, you can't dance. I mean, if you can't dance or break, I mean, if you can't dance, play basketball or football, you need a plan B because how are you going to support your family? Once you mess up that the body, you got to go to plan B. So, you know, it's just uh, some things I tell kids when I, when I meet them. I'm like, yo, a great dancer, but have a backup plan because you never know what the future holds. And breaking is great. While you're young, when you get older, like my age, you know, the body doesn't change the way it used to be. It changes. <laughs> it's hard to get up in the morning, you know, walk, you know, and your body starts, you know, make it changes. You know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So now, now you're in Queens. Right, right. So, you know, describe your neighborhood in Queens. What's it like? How does it feel? Well, Story Queens was really nice. You know, they have a majority of different nationalities. You know, they had Greeks, you know, they had Spanish, they had Polish people. You know, you have the Spanish, you have Latinos, you have the, 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 the brothers, you know, and you had Indian people. You know, it was a versatile uh, environment, and it, it was very quiet, you know. Not like the Bronx. The Bronx was like, when you walk down the block, you got to watch your back. You know, you don't know if someone's going to rob somebody or shoot somebody. It was a more calmer environment for me and my family. That's when I find says, you know, you could go upstairs, you could go down the block, you could come upstairs in the hallway, no one's going to rob you. Because remember, people used to get robbed in the Bronx in the hallway. Right. People come back to the supermarket, they stick you up, give me your food, give me your money. And, you know, so it was definitely different. Uh, you know, I went to public school out there, 111, where, you know, I started seeing the dancing again in, in the cafeterias. When we go to the cafeteria, I had a friend, um, his name was, uh, what's his name? Danny. He used, to, he used to play the drum on the table while we were eating. I'm like, yo, you're a good drummer. He goes, yeah, you like the And he used to do it with his hands. I'm like, yo, bro. I wish I could meet him now because he does good beats, but uh, he used to play in a thing, and I'm like, whoa. And then, you know, I look around, and, and people, would, you know, have little radios. They had the, um, what do you call it? the? Uh, they had the headset, and they had one headset, the, the Walkmans. The Walkmans, yeah. Right. They had one where you put the headset in, and one you unplug it, his little speaker. So I used to play music, and then I used to see people dancing. I'm like, oh, okay. But, uh, you know, that's that's when I said, see, the, 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 how do you say, now, hip-hop. It wasn't called hip-hop back, back then, but you've seen a lot of hip-hop dances. You had the girls doing the jump rope in the auditorium. Double dutch. You know, double dutch, right. And then you had, um, you know, you had people, like, doing handstands and, you know, just different kind of things, you know, things started developing in, in, in the world. And then, like I said, once we got out of public high school, once I moved, once I got out of public school, I went to junior high school where my sister said, hey, when, we, when you go there, I'm going to take you there. I'm going to tell you about junior high school. A little different. You know, it's now you do it all, all other adults now. And a lot of people, you're going to be exposed to other things. So I'm like, okay. So my sister, when I got to junior high school, 204, you know, she said, this is the cafeteria. This is the gym. She introduced me to the principal. This, this is my brother. Said, okay, nice to meet you. Yeah, just I want to make sure he's right. Because when you guys to junior high school, you start smoking cigarettes, you start drinking, you create habits. So she just wanted to make sure that I was all right. So that's when I really, that was that was the starting point for me for a breaking. Cause then I, um, I, mean, I seen this guy in the cafeteria again, not 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 the same people that I seen from public school. Another guy, his name was Nelson Cardona, and he's gonna be on the video. And this is his picture right here. And um, you know he's you know I started doing things, doing some footwork. He did like some uh, like top rock. He did some footwork, and then he hit the floor, and then. You know, he did like a couple of moves, and I was like, "Wow, that's cool. That's like the kids in the Bronx. That's oh my god, I got, I gotta meet this guy." And then you had the, uh, you had some guys from Queensbridge, where they were doing some, um, you know, they they battled him. And back then it was called, I heard it called burning. They were called burning. They do top stuff, smell you, hit the floor, hump it, do some forward and get up. So it just started, it started evolving within that time with the moves. People were finding their moves and creating their own identity and their move for the world to see what are they doing. So that's when I got an interest to it. And I said, I got to meet this guy. So 
he was walking home one day. I said, hey, yo, listen, how you doing? Hey, I know you are. Your sister's Rosemary. I said, yeah, you had a crush on my sister. So I used that for my pants. Like, your sister's real pretty. Oh, yeah, she's right. She, this is pretty, right? She's cool, right? So I said, yeah, I do. He goes, yeah, yeah, she don't give me the, 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 the time and date. I said, well, I can deduce you. I said, I want to know how you do those moves, man. He goes, really? You know how to dance? I said, I know a little bit. I mean, I used to watch TV. Remember, I used to do the hustle, martial arts. You know, I watched James Brown. You know, everybody started with seeing something and then taking that and developing other other ideas. But uh, so he said, yeah, okay, I'll keep you in mind. So, you know, a couple of days went by. You know, I seen him again at lunch. We came up to him, hey, listen, uh, you know, this is not, now we had 76. The year was 76 in, in junior high school, 204. And uh, he's telling me, hey, we're going to have a, a group uh, meeting and we're looking for dancers. Do you want to join? I'm like, yeah. So he goes, okay. So he goes, I'll let you know. So I think it was that Friday, I see him in the hallway. He goes, hey, you ready? I'm like, what? He goes, we got to cut school. We got to go on the train to Denmark. And my father and my mom still broke up. So I was still skeptical. My father was still kicking my butt. But my, my, my mom's and my father in that time, they separated. Father moved out. My mom was taking care of me and my sister. So she was the father and the mother. My father was more strict, and my mom was a little, you know, a little leaner that I could. So I'm like, damn, yeah, man, I, I, my father find I'm going to be in trouble. So I said, all right. She goes, yo, in about an hour, we meet here. So I went to the bathroom to the uh, teacher. I'm going to go to the bathroom. So I met him outside. We went out the back of the uh, school. We ran up to uh, 36th Avenue in the Story Queens, ran up on the, uh, it was the, uh, it was the end train. Yeah, it was the end train. We jumped on the end train. And we got up in Dittmar's Boulevard in, in by uh, Astoria. And it was a Marine. It was Dittmar's Boulevard, the last stop on the entry. We walked about maybe about, a, about two miles to uh, the Marine Terrace housing. So there we went to the basement and we met Eddie Ed and Charlie Chaz. Those, these two guys right here that you see on the screen is the guys that actually auditioned me to, uh, for Dynamic Rockers. They said... So when he got nothing, he goes, yo, this guy is good. You know, he amped me up. I wasn't really all that. But so they had a radio, they had a radio. It was in the basement, and they put it on plate. And I just said, like, I did. I jumped on my knees. I jumped on the side. I jumped on the other side, and I got back up. And they looked at each other. Okay, very good. Nelson, let's talk to you for a second. They're like, you know, he got no moves. What, what? No, but, you know, he's determined, good guy. So he put in a good word. So Eddie Ed came up to say, oh, you have a lot of heart, kid. I'm going to give you an opportunity. That day when I went home, started practicing, practicing, doing my handstands, standing on my head, and just clear the whole living room. And I kept practicing every day, every day, every day, every day. As time went on, uh, he used to, then when I introduced my sister, he started coming over. And she, no, she, I think she, they became friends and stuff like that. I don't know. I, don't, I can't recall they dated. But, uh, you know, she was smiling. She goes, just be careful because he, he's, you know, he smokes cigarettes and he drinks. I don't want you drinking and smoking cigarettes. I'm like, no, I get it. I get it. He just giving me the ideas of, you know, helping me with my mood so I could get better and I could definitely join the Dynamic Rockers. She said, all right. So I started practicing my house every day. $40 a day, I would train. I would train. I would train. Little by little, there was a club opening up. It was between, I think, the end of, uh, like, the end of almost before the summer was over, this club opened up called One of a Kind. It was on 30th Avenue, One of a Kind Disco. Uh, hopefully, we get a, a picture of it. I'm trying to get a picture so we can show everybody. It was a teenage club, you know. So, the guy from my neighborhood, his name was Pop, and he had a son called his name was David Cardo. David Cardo and Damien, they used to DJ at the club. It was a teen club, so Dynamic Rockers would go there. And, you know, they have dance concerts. They would do hustling. They would do uh, uh, rocking because it was called rocking. It was called breaking yet. They would rock and they would actually, you know, saying do the hustle. Sometimes even Latin dancing. And you get a prize. So I talked to Mr. Pop with Nelson. Nelson said, hey, Pop, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Why don't you join the baseball team? You know, because Pop had the baseball team. He'd be involved with the community. He had a store. So he was around, always around with the youth and trying to get... Who just got, oh, I know your mom, your mother's name is Virginia, right? I'm like, yeah, my mom's name. So how, how can I help you guys? So he goes, yeah, you got a teenage club. I want to bring him. He goes, oh, okay, I, I don't mind you going, but uh, I, it's not a teenage club, no. Now it's 18 and over. I'm selling alcohol now. So from a teenage club, he said, I do that on Sundays. 
But in Sunday, it wasn't the day to go. You have all kids there. I was going with the adults walk. That's where the breaking, I mean, the rocking was at. So, you know, he goes, all right, I'm going to let you in. But if I catch you drinking or smoking, I'm throwing you out. I know your mother. I said, no, I just want to dance. It's okay. But you come on Sunday. I said, they don't really dance what I'm looking for on Sunday. That's just regular like teen club. But it wasn't really, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the teens that were actually doing the, uh, the movement on this, uh, on the breaking and, and the rocking. I mean, really rocking. They were rocking. I said, I want to be where the rock is at. So I, I went there, I seen Eddie Egg, oh, what's up, hey, how you doing? A couple of fellas, I met a guy named Beat Bop. I met, uh, I knew Charlie, I knew Eddie Ed. Beat the boy, he was from the Bronx too, he used to live in Marie Terrace, Beat the boy. And he learned from original TBB, the Bronx boys, he right. learned from them. He used to live in the Marie Terrace. It was Sugar Bear, Charlie Chaz, Eddie Ed, and then Nelly No. you know, he would come with me. So I would actually see them first battle, right there. They battled this group called the Manhattan Boys. It was Crash Out of Bang, Ali Al, and Bingo. It was one other guy, I can't remember who it was. But uh, so they 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 battled them. The, the Mahan boys took out the Dynamic Rockers. And I was watching, oh, this is a battle? Oh, okay. It's the first time I seen a battle. We took about like, the, you know, 76. And I was like, wow. So two weeks later, I go again. Now Dynamic battles them again. This time, Eddie Ed wins. He says in his other documentary, I'm, like, I'm sure you heard it. He goes, yeah, you know, we took him the second time. So then the third time, the two weeks out, I kept practicing. I went and I battled the Mahan boys and I took them out. Like I did uh, head spins, I did windmills. You know, I was already, I was on that level, you know what I'm saying? They, they was amazed by my moves because I started creating, I started finding my way and breaking, like what was my move? Head spin, windmills, 76, 77. The power moves started coming into play and these moves, like I said, there wasn't a lot of videos to watch people. You have to go to the club to see other people. But I never, all I see them do was footwork and one shot head spins. I did continuous. I was staying on my head, stayed a long time there. Uh, I would do different transition head spins, holding my leg, Lotus. I got pictures with it. Uh, you know, head spins and windmills were in 76, 77, you know. And then 77, after, after, the, um, after that battle in, uh, when I was kind, they put me down with Dynamic Rockers. Once I was down with Dynamic Rockers, I was like, oh, my God, yeah, that's awesome. So I didn't know what to call myself. You know, they were like, oh, you need a nickname. I'm like, uh, what's your name? Clemente. Nah, okay. C. I said, nah. I said, I want to call Tony Tone. I said, and goes, nah. So I called myself Tony Tone for a little while. Then this girl named Lucille, first generation of Rockettes, she had a hat on, right, with a ball, and it had Snoopy on it, right? So you go, why don't you call yourself Snoopy Rock? I mean, I'm telling you the word is, it's kind of funny. So so, <laughs> so she goes, we call Snoopy Rock. Just because I liked her, I said, all right, I'll Snoopy Rock. She goes, that's cute. And she smiled at me. I, was, I liked it. I said, oh, my gosh, she's beautiful. So I, I became Snoopy Rock for a little while. So now Mr. Glide and uh, Mr. Glide, Mr. Freeze, and Kid Freeze, they came to one of a kind, and I seen them. He, Kid Freeze started dating her. And I said, like, oh man, he's dating a pretty girl, I like her. So I met him, and I said, hey, how you doing, hey, what's up? Like, so we, you know, we, Eddie had introduced us to them, because he met them at the wave. Mm -hmm. So we met in, in one of a kind, and Eddie was still president, you know what I'm saying? So from there on, uh, you know, I stopped going there for a while, and I would just stay home and train, and train, and train. I would train with spinner, wavy legs, uh, Nelly Nell, you know, uh, Quickie, Flexi. Um, you know. Then I met a guy named CR, which he showed me the swipe, the front swipe that I never seen before. His name is his name is CR. He used to go to my hand and see the guys too. A lot of, a lot of moves in developing stages came from different places, but for 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 the record, the power moves that that I'm talking about came from Queens, came from Astoria. We were second division of Dynamic Rockers. Eddie Ed and the Dimmons division, Charlie Chaz, Eddie Ed, Beat the Boy, Ronald Gruby, ACH, they came from Dimmons. When Nelly Nell became the president of 36th Avenue in Astoria, we were the elite crew. We, we were like, we were already up there. I mean, we were, we were practicing every day. You know, we practiced in my house. We moved the living room, everything. I would practice husbands there. Uh, you know, we go to our sister community center and we would practice there. And then, you know, I just, I would just, you know, I wanted to change the world out, you know. Sometimes they, when they're not there and it's 12 o'clock at midnight, I was like, 
I was like, God, I want to change the world. I want to, I want to do something different. I want to be part of that vessel to change the world and make it better. And I love dancing, God. And sure enough, I kept practicing and then eat. I fast. I trained 40 hours in a day, 24 hours in a day. And I just kept at, you know, what I love from the passion from my the desire to become that B-boy. And sure enough, my mood started becoming easier. At the beginning, it was hard. Like, you know, especially like, you know, the head spin was like I had to practice all day, every day. You know, you get sore. You know, then I used to do spins on, on, on the floor so fast. I used to get like, you know, scabs. I used to peel it off. After a while, I started getting hard. Because remember, I'm spinning. Cause, and then sometimes you spin the wrong, you hit your low back, then you have scabs. You know, I have to peel them off and put things. And then I couldn't spin on that shoulder. So you get a couple of bruises, uh, uh, bruises do the transition when you're doing the power moves because you're going to get hurt. But little by little, the moves start getting more defined. You start getting better in your craft because the more you put in, the better you get. But you do get injured. I got, you know, I broke fingers. You know, power moves are very dangerous, especially air moves. You know, I was trying to do air moves, something different. That there wasn't people doing it. And uh, like I said, then um, it comes to where there was another club that opened up. It was 77. It was called Carousel. That's where it started for us. So in 77, to the best of my knowledge, not 100%, but to the best of my knowledge, I'm trying to think, Eddie had started leaving the crew. He's like, yo, I got other things in mind. I don't know if he's going to the service. Uh, I don't know if he just had time. He had to work because he had to make money. You know, people get older, you get responsibility. So, you know, okay, we heard about it. And I was like, yo, Eddie is leaving the crew. I'm taking over the crew. So Nelly Nell, you know, he put us all down, put me down. You know, everybody got their story how they got down. But, you know, we had a little awesome crew. So we didn't go to no clubs for a little while. We were just trained. Then the, the meeting was called for Carousel, where uh, we was informed that, uh, you know, it's this meeting to be placed in Carousel. Mr. Glide wanted to be president. Or oh, Eddie yet gave it to Charlie. And then Charlie said, I, I don't think I'm fit for the job. Eddie Ed said, Charlie, you know, but you know everything. I'll give you this book with everybody's name in it. So he's like, I'm not fit for it. Maybe somebody else. He goes, Mr. Glide. He goes, yes, Charlie Chas says, yes, I co-sign. Yeah, you, he's the one. He's the one. I, I don't, I, I think he's, he's good. He's a good one. So he recommended him to be. He's like, I'm going to pass the hat on to him. So that's when uh, Mr. Glide came. He says, yeah, talk to Eddie. So we didn't take it light. He said, all right, well, you know, we got to battle for that. We got to battle for presidency. So, you know, it was me. Wavy Legs, Nelly Nell, Spinner, Flexi, Quickie. And there was three of them. It was Mr. Freeze, Kid Freeze. Kid, uh, uh, Mr. Freeze was uh, Victor's brother, George. Mr. Freeze, you know, great guy, up rocker, nice, nice person, and everything. Kid Freeze was Pierre, which is uh, uh, Mr. Glide's uh, cousin, nephew, some family. So it was three of them. So I went like, yo. I want that name, Kid Freeze. I'll buy you for Kid Freeze. He said, all right, we battle. I said, if you lose, you take your shirt off. He said, all right. Mr. Glide, I think, battle wavy legs or split. I'm not too sure. And then, oh, there was one more. Sorry, Javier was four of them. They were first called. They used to be called the Majestic Four, to the best of my knowledge, before they became dynamic. That's, they, they, met, they met Eddie in the club, the wave, and they were called the Majestic Four. And then he said, hey, maybe you should come down with my crew. And so... When we get to a carousel, it's four of them against four of us. So I think I went first. I battled Kid Freeze for his name. I said, yeah, go. And he did his stuff. I went down. I did top rock, footwork, windmill, head spin. A gun that jumped up. Like, okay. Then he went down again. And then I did a, a windmill, head glide, windmill, head glide, and froze and popped up. And everybody's name goes, yo, bro, you're nasty, bro. He took off his shirt. I was beside a Kid Freeze in 1977. I became Kid Freeze. I won it. I, I won my name by a battle. And that's how I won the battle. How I lost the battle was in a car accident. That's what threw me off the grid. I got off the, the whole you know, B-boy scene and everything. But the grace of God come back to tell my story. And I'm honored I could be here with you and, and trying to get the storyline facts for the record. This is what it is. And uh, like I said, it was a lot of great contenders meeting, you know, uh, Mr. Glide, great, great dude. Uh, he brought a lot to the table. We inspired each other. We always practiced together. We bonded together. You know, we said, you know, the guys we talked after each of them battled, I'm like, yo, bro, guy seems like a good dude. You know, let's give, let him do his thing. He could get his shows. 
nobody's getting a show. We could, let's make some money, man, of, of our dance. We said, all right. And then we became the best of brothers, man. We, you know, we rocked hard. He took us to his house. We practiced his house. We practiced at my house. We practiced center. And we practiced everywhere. And we started developing. And we started doing shows. You know, we did, we did a, That's Incredible, Battle of the Floor Masters. Wow. You know, a, a kind of battle. And we did, we went to USA. We battled, we went to USA. It was where we battled uh, Rocksteady crew. But before Rocksteady, we went to USA. We took over USA. We had, there was already crews there. There was uh, the Nice and Nasty. There was a uh, Stone City crew. CC Boys was called Cocaine City Boys. Uh, it was, um, the seven stars, they were like the ball bus. They were called the seven stars. There was a lot of them. Right. It was mostly a lot of Dominicans, but they called seven stars. And then uh, that's where I met King Up Rock at, uh, you know, uh, in USA. You know, they have rockers, and we had dynamic rockers. And then I seen them, and, and they were, I seen them with a girl. The girl was getting down. She was actually rocking. I think her name is Diana, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, I got some music. So he came up to me, and he goes, yo, what's your name? I said, my name's Kid Free. You guys rock? I said, yeah, we rock. But we, I wasn't all rocking. I right. was breaking. So he was like, let me see you rock. So I said, wait till the music come on. So Apache came on. So, you know, I, I, you know, uh, Baby J was the DJ at uh, USA. And uh, I said, I waited for it to come in. It was a, a song called uh, Get Up and Go to School. Get up, get up and go. It was really mixed with Apache. But, uh, you know, it was a dope beat. So I went down and started breaking. He goes, yo, bro, I thought you said you rock. I said, yo, I'm rocking. Uh -huh. He goes, no. I said, I said, what are you talking about? He goes, I'm right. I said, no, 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 bro. I don't all right. I break. You know, he goes, oh, okay. Yo, I like to learn. I said, yeah, I like to learn some more rock steps too. So, you know, we started, we started, we, came, we changed numbers and we became friends. I introduced him to the rest of the guys. He used to come to a story and train in the community center. The community center has been still there. They always had the door open for, for all the uh, kids to get them out the streets. And I used to go there and, and they gave me a lot of time practicing. Uh, you know, I got, I'm working on a couple of films right now with old footage. I have a lot of footage, a lot of pictures. I got a lot of uh, videos, you know, of my beginning. I'm going back to the Betamax. I'm going back to the VCRs and trying to recuperate some of my receipts. So when people say, what are you talking about? I mean, I just got my story. I mean, hip hop is, is, is expanding to a high level now. But my thing is, I appreciate like I put my story here, and this is my story, and I'm doing a couple of other stories. But in in the documentaries now, people want to see right receipts. What do you got? So you know, so I'm trying to do the best of my knowledge to actually have everything on deck when when they see it. They could, you know, just roll the camera. They could judge it for themselves. That's what I can do. But you know, being a b boy, you know, I I seen so much in my life coming from the Bronx. You know, came from rough neighborhoods. You know. I went through a lot of trials and tribulation in life, you know, dealing with, you know, the barriers of good and bad. But my parents always gave me good value, be a good guy. You know, if you see somebody needs help, you help them. Yeah, I'm Aquarius. I always like to help people. I give. Sometimes I'm selling my hats. And I'm like, yo, you don't got it here. It's for your son here. You know, because I, I like to give, man. In this world, there's not too much love left. It's a lot of haters. And I just pray for them because they just don't want to let God in their heart. If you have a little more love, God will show you the way. But like I said, you know, I was blessed by the Lord that, uh, you know, I, I, I seen the world, I traveled. And uh, after we became one unit dynamic, you know, that's when uh, Mr. Glide, he, you know, he stepped it up. He did his thing. He really brought it to the whole nother level, which, you know, like I said, head spins, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm sorry, New York City B-Boy, we were all New York City B-Boys. And, uh, you know, we, we, we did our thing we, as a crew dynamic. Everybody played a part, you know what I'm saying? He, he helped us, you know, with the gigs. We all trained together. We did routines together. You know, we sit up all night training. We go out. We were always together. We was never, we was never that we wasn't together. We lived everywhere together. Oh, we gonna stay at your house. We stayed in my house, and we were trained consistently. So when the when the iconic battles came, the first the big break that we got was when we met Rocksteady Crew. We was doing shows in um, Webster Hall because he got his show. We did Webster Hall. We did uh, we used to dance in the Fun House. We did a, a club called Players Retreat. Let me tell you about Players Retreat. It was a place where there was people having sex. It was on 28th Street by the 11th Avenue. It's called Plays Retreat. It was a private club. I'm, I'm, I'm like 19 years old, 11 years old. I went to see this club and I had people naked. Oh, you guys dance good. You see everything. And then they had a room where, you know, people having sex. But we were just doing shows there. We had food. But, you know, I was exposed to that as a kid. I was exposed to a lot and, and just seeing 
My family would say, hey, be good. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, don't put yourself out there. The world is full of a lot of malicious things. But, you know, we did that. So after Pillars Retreat, we did a couple of shows around tri-state area in New York. So we even go to USA for a couple of weeks. They go, yo, you need to go to USA. There's the guys from the Bronx there. So I told Wavy Legs. I told Spinner. I told Nelly Now. Nelly Now was from the Bronx, too, so he knew about them. But, like, Spinner, Wavy Legs, and Quickie, and, and uh, uh, Flexia, they didn't know about them. I said, yo, these are the guys from the Bronx. They're, you know, they, they're the ones that they took over from the from the 70 B-Boys because I knew my history. I was from the Bronx. So I'm like, you know, they, they ain't the main guys, but they're the guys that they're making it happen now. And they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. So we went to USA. We decided, you know, they used to have, it was packed that day. You know, the security, yo, we didn't have to get online. We were like, we were like ghetto celebrities. Damn rock, yo, yo, let them through, let them through. So we go through security, what's up, security, what's up, yo, what's up, big man, what's going on, everything. Yo, they got some, yo, Kid Freeze, they got some dudes from the Bronx. That's where I'm from, Papa, let's go. Bring that fire, let's do it. So I walked inside, we went through the stairs, we walked over the bridge, because the, the USA was a skating ring, you skate around it, right? So when you walk in, you walk in, make a right, there's stairs going up, and there was a bridge going right to the dance floor. Boom. That's where it was happening. So we got on the bridge, I'm like, yo, I'm excited, man. Now we got we got some dancing. Because we battled everybody from USA. We battled, we battled the CC boys, Stone City crew, nice and nasty. So that was our spot. Because when we first went there, they were sitting by the speaker. So right. now when we go in there, we took over. That was our play. But now you have Rocksteady in there. I'm like, oh, what, what are they doing? This is our territory. So when we got on the bridge, I heard the DJ say, yo, big shout out to Dynamic Rockers in the building. And they, they put on the break piece. And I'm looking, look at the circles. It was like five or six circles. Wow. They were getting crazy. My hair's are going up. I'm like, yo, these are these dudes. Get ready. This is this. I've been waiting for this day, man, to come. So we went in circle. I'm like, yo, wait, they get in there. Boom. Took over Jack and Wavy Legs. We went down, we went forward. Crazy they said, Crazy Legs? Wait, Wavy Legs, what's that? And he took over and said, Crazy Legs, and he battled him. And then um, Mr. Guy goes down. Frosty Freeze goes down. Frosty Freeze goes down. I go down. Kid Freeze. Kid Freeze goes down. Mr. Uh, Frosty Freeze, Kid Freeze, Mr. Freeze. And then uh, 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 Spinner went down. Kent Swift went down. And everybody revealed their colors. You know, say because we know we had a couple of guys had jackets. Some guys just went down. They had the colors. You seen it? It was the iron letters in the front. Where it said your name, Kid Freeze, whatever your name was. A uh, wavy leg spinner, quickie, and the back would say Dynamic Rockers. If you see the documentary Star Wars, you actually see the interpretation of how the battle went. There was a five or six hour battle. There was a lot of footage that was not shown, and I'm really concerned about it because that was part of the history. It was a lot of moves that I was doing back then. You know, for the stand of uh, uh, for the records, for straight for the record, windmills, hollow planches. You know, 1990s. There was a lot of stuff that was shown that we did in the video that was not shown due to editing purposes. And I want to set that for the record. They were on contract with Charlie Ehern. We wasn't, so we were the underdogs. So they edited how they wanted to. But with the grace of God, history will reveal and it will prove. You know, who won that battle in the Lincoln Center battle? But let me tell you, Rocksteady is a, is a great crew. I don't take nothing away from them. They made me who I am today because because of the Bible. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Rocksteady members. Ken Swift, Mr. Freeze, and me went on tour together. We get to that story. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, there's a few guys that, that we got along with and a few guys that I didn't get along with. And I don't mention no names, but I just want to put it out there in the world to know. And uh, you guys know who you are. Like I said, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of Rocksteady members were really became good friends with me, you know. And you know, I even went to the when I used to go to the Bronx, man. There were some stories about that. I mean, there's a lot of stories, but to cover it, I just want to say that you know, I want to thank you know the Rocksteady crew for making me who I am today. So without them, I, I wouldn't be who I am. And besides them, it's the TVB, the Zulu Kings, and everybody that's participated in hip hop. What you call it today, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity from the '60s to the '70s to the 80s. Everybody that had a part of it, I salute you because we all did it together. And I just want to be, I just want to say that I'm happy that I'm part of it. And there's just so much history. I mean, it's, it's I, I experienced a lot being a B-boy. Like I traveled the world. I was with the best MCs. I traveled with them. I did shows with them. I went to France. Coming from the Bronx, being a B-boy, getting that ghetto status in the street, to become the b-boy icon in Hollywood, in Africa, and around world, around world, worldwide b-boy, 
man, I was blessed. I'm highly blessed. God is great. <laughs> right. You know, and, and, and I was seeing a lot of celebrities. And, and, and I was like, the fun, I want to say one thing quickly. When, when we came back, I mean, I know we can get to it, but I just want to jump to this quickly. When we came back from Africa, right, I went to Florida and I made up a crew called the Street Masters, 1984. The Street Masters. I'm the CEO, founder of the Street Masters. I met this guy named Mohammed Moretta and Ronnie. Ron, his name was Ron. And Mohammed Moretta used to work for uh, Power 96 in, in Florida. I, I can't remember the, the radio station. But I met him. He's like, hey, kid, what's up? Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. And, you know, I, I, had, I had money. I had two bodyguards. I had two bodyguards. I had a bigger chain of this. I had a kid freeze, all in diamonds. I got it from the uh, Mr. Swartz. I, I, you know, I made, it, I made a chain out of diamonds because Africa, you had diamonds. So I took my silver one and made it gold, and I put diamonds on every letter. It was worth in the States 10 grand. So, you know, so, you know, I had bodyguards. So I met this guy. He goes, yo, you guys, how long you out here? So we're we trying to do a movie, Night to the City, out here. And, uh, you know, it's my bodyguard, Sandy P. He goes, okay, nice to meet you. Listen, would you like to do shows? We'll get your side job. Yo, that sounds good. So I met his partner, Ron. And they became, you know, my side, my side uh, managers and agent because I was on contract. You know, I used to do a lot of things that would make money. You know, so I said, let me take opportunity. I mean, don't get mad, Jeff Kutel, but, you know, I was young. <laughs> my my <laughs> old man is like, well, I didn't know that. But anyway, so I met them and they said, hey, we got a, a gig for you, a big gig. Uh, 1984, Miss Universe Pageant. I, had, I got the film for that too. So uh, he said, you know, let's get, let's do an audition for some kids. So I'm saying, okay, cool. So. Uh, you know, I was home watching, uh, I was in a hotel and my, my bodyguards went to get some, some food. So I'm watching, he called me, he goes, yo, oh. that's when we had the big party, remember that big phone? Mm -hmm. And I had the beep, 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 they called him out, doop, doop, at the big one. Yeah, what's going on? Yo, you thought of the name it? I said, no, I'm thinking. He goes, yo, I got some great, uh, you know, I got some goods from the street, they're really good. I'm like, all right, let me think of it. I'm going to get some breakfast right now. I got to go run around, do some stuff, but I'll get back to you. So I turn the TV, what comes on? Masters of the Universe. Remember he man? Masters yeah. of the Universe. So I'm, I'm looking at this and uh, I'm really thinking Masters of the Universe. Uh, Masters of the Universe, Street Masters. Street Masters. Oh, Street Masters. Oh my God. I said Masters of the Universe. I'm saying Street, Street. Something with Street, Street. I said Master of the Universe. I said Street Masters. Street Masters. Oh, that'd be a dope name. I call him. Yo, we, I said, you won't even believe what I got. But you like it was yeah. So I had, coming from Africa, I had BMX suits because when I was in, in, in Africa, I used to ride BMX and it used to be really hot in Africa. So it was a ramp. We go, you know, take the bus to the, down the hill and there'll be bikes where you go down the hill and, and then they will sell uniforms, their helmets. And I'm like, yo, that, that'll be dope for breaking. Like, it looks kind of futuristic. Cause like I got the nine on now. This is the old school, like the right. nine on. So I was always ahead of my time. I was trying to change the dynamic of the old school to the new school. And, um, you know, I got the BMX suit. Uh, in the picture right here, as you see, there's the BMX suit on. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I said, hey, let's get sponsored by a, a BMX company. So we got sponsored by JT. And in the video that you see, uh, it's called um, 19 Farmers Unit Project. We had the street uniform. There's a JT, uh -huh. Street Masters, and then I name it, uh, Street Masters in the back, and I name it in the front. And we actually performed for Tom Jones. And, and the funny thing about it is that my father loved Tom Jones. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. My father used to always play this up. So when I call my father, he goes, he goes, hey, kid, how you been or not? Where you at now? You been coming for? I know, Dad, I've been busy. I said, Dad, turn on the TV, tell us something, something. I got a surprise for you. He turns on the TV, put on Channel 4. Ladies and gentlemen, 1984, Miss Junior's Project. They playing it, seen Tom Jones. All this time. And then when we came out, he seen Tom Jones. And then he goes, and after he came out, they sit down, the street masters, and we come on breaking. My father said, oh, my God, my crazy son spinning on his head, making all this money, spinning on his head, and I told him to become a doctor, and he don't listen. Look, he's with Tom Jones. He started crying because he's like, oh, my God, my son really did something with this. He became somebody because he used to dominate. Become a doctor. What are you doing cleaning the floor? When you finish that, go clean your mouth. You want your head over there. He's like, you know, not really pushing me for like that was a I get it. Your father. Right. You know, like your father. Give him the right information. I'm like, Dad, I'm going to prove you wrong. I think I love what I do. I love I love what I do. I'm going to create something. So I started developing my own ideas and bringing it to breaking. With, uh, you know, some of these kids are doing today. You know, I, my, my idea was to, to be part of preserving some of these moves 
and for the grace of God, because God gave me this breaking move. Not man, but God gave me this, this talent that I could I could embrace to others. I told a lot of people on my journey. You know, I got Icy Ice from the New York City Breakers, was Corey Montaro. He was uh he was my he was uh before he was I taught him, he was first uh Mr. Glide's partner, he was called Little Glide. And he was down with Dynamic for a while, then he left Floor Masters New York City Breakers. That's one. Second was Flo, Icy Ice, rest in peace. You know, I, I started him off. A lot of B-boys I mentor, El Nino. You know, he's going to, I, 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 I pretty much think he's going to Olympic. He used to come to my house. I used to train with him. He used to come over in the weekends. He used to train with El Nino. Beautiful, beautiful young man. The pictures are here. You can see them. The videos are here. The receipts are here. Everything is documented and, and it's, it's just factor. So what I'm trying to say is like each one teach one. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do I, 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 but God gave me a gift and we share that gift between each other. Before it, all this money came in, trillion dollars of business hip hop, it was about love. What happened to the love? Because the, the money sometimes is brutal or evil. Forget about love. It's the e enemy approaches you with the money now. Mm -hmm. so it's all about money. I get it. You, you, you got to pay the bills, but you know, each one teach one. It's not that much love the way you used to. You know, a lot of people try to claim things. Just have the receipts, man. Just have the receipts, have a good story, and let the people decide. That's it. And I appreciate the story because, like I said, I got my receipts, my pictures, and I've done a lot. And I'm, I'm grateful for the grace of God that, you know, I'm, I'm around to see it going to the Olympics. For the kids, yeah. For me, I, I don't think so much because, you know, like I said, once everything gets into a commercial aspect, you lose the, the authentic of, of it, you know, the rawness of it, you know. Right. And people trying to change the dynamics of it. That's when you lose the value of it. Like it's, like it's happening now in hip hop, in every in every which sense, is either, either you know what I'm saying the uh, the rap sense, the graffiti, the b boy, you know it becomes a commercial market. So they try to take control of your craft, and then they don't want to pay you. They want to just use your craft, and they they want you to donate your services, but they don't want to pay. But they're gonna make money off what you built. But you know that's just fact. I tell people just have a lawyer. You know you can read the contracts because now they're doing a lot of endorsements. I mean, any of these drinks are the most ones that are doing things. The Red Bull, Monster, they're all doing it. It's not a good drink. I mean, I was thinking about doing a, a healthy energy drink, but there's a lot of chemicals in there. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I heard stories about some taking too much. I mean, it just speeds up your heart, man. It's, it's a lot of uh, chemicals in there. But I'm not the one to judge. But, uh, you know, like I said, they, they sponsor a lot of events. But, you know, just know what you want in life and just be, be firm with it. Like, I want this and know that you're in control of it. Don't let nobody can take control of your career because then you're going to be, you know, you sign your soul away to the devil and you don't want to do that. And I'm glad that I never did that. I, with the grace of God, they had me. And, um, you know, I, I fell to the sidelines because I was in an accident, but everything happens for a reason. I'm glad to still be here. I'm on it. I'm blessed. I, I love my moms, my father, and, you know, everybody supports me. I love my daughters. I got two daughters, you know. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm glad I could be around these kids and when they ask me questions, I let them know. You got to train hard. You want it? How bad you want it? You know what I'm saying? And they're like, I'll see them in a month or two. Kid Freeze, look, I got I said, see? Wow, that's dope. Here, here's a free hat. Oh, thank you. You want to sign it for you? Okay. And it's, you know, just got to motivate each other. You know what I'm saying? Each one teach one. And it's, it's the world's changing, man. It's sad, man. But whoever's left to show love, show love. That's what I can say. <laughs> Kid Freeze, B-boy. A lot of different B-boys right. have different, you know, uh, definitions of what the B and B boy means. Right. What does the B and B boy mean to you, and why? Okay, B boy. There's a lot of meanings that they could come out of it. First, my my opinion. First of all, giving respect to the Bronx boys. It was a, I, I would say Bronx boy at one. Second thing, B boy. Uh, when they put a when they put a break beat on, B boys used to break to the to the segment of the record when the break comes on. So called a break boy. You know, they also called a break boy, Bronx boy. Uh, but mostly, I, I look at it as when when B boys got down. When you when that break comes on, you see the boys getting down. Break boy. Right. You know, what I'm saying they used to break to the they used to break to that beat. You know, but I I, I think of it as I mean that's the first two, but. B-Boy is being the best you could be as a, a B-Boy at anything in the world, being the best at what you believe in. Like me, when I became a B-Boy, I wanted to become the best B-Boy in the world. Like I wanted to change the game, head spins, power moves, transition, head spins with handcuffs, you know, 
uh, illusions and stuff. Like, you know, I, I'm still anointed by God's gift to be the best that I could be as in being creative because the God, God gives you creation is what you create to be and be the best you could be at. So I, I'll go with the best you could be, best boy. Like, you know, being the best you could be as a boy to, you know, show the world your gifts that God gave you to. Because God gave me my gifts. I, like, I'm going to say I, 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 because I, I, was, I, was, I didn't bring myself to the world. I believe in a higher power. God brought me to this universe, and I was able to, um, uh, you know, transcend the energy he gave me and I actually brought me to the life of, you know, I brought energy to breaking. That Back then, a lot of people were doing it, but I brought in my, my energy. I, I brought in God's energy that he gave me to transcend the moves, and you can actually see these dynamics, but they were very hard. So I, I was, I worked very hard to be the best in my craft. So best, best boy, I would say, be the best you could be in life, not just breaking, just in life, period. Be the best person, personality, uh, you know, treat people the way you want to get treated. You know, just be, be, be a good person, best, you know. That's what I can think of, being, being the best in what you believe. I keep it like that because I keep going, but, of course. Yeah, you know, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of damage for a break, boy, you know. But, yeah, I go with, like, being the best you can be as a, as a boy. I mean, you got B-girls, too. The best day is B-girls, too. They used to break to the center of the record. B-boys, B-girls, and the same thing. Be the best girl you can be. And anything, not just breaking, it could be graphics, it could be it could be reading, it could be poetry, it could be designing buildings. Be the best you could be in the B-boy and the B-girl. Be the best at, at what you believe that you feel in your heart that you want to change the world because everybody could change the world. So what's the best craft you got? Let's show, let's see what you got. Be the best you could be. All you people out there looking at this documentary. I wish you the best. Be the best you could be. I did it. You could do it too. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now, everybody who's familiar with the B-boy culture, even B-boy culture worldwide, right. knows what you're, you know, right. you're known for, what, right. you, what you're famous for, right, right. you know, and, you know, if I, you know, help out the world here, it's the power move. Right, right. What power moves are significant to your choreography, to your routines, mm -hmm. you know? And how did you come about those power moves? Right. So, uh, all right, this is a uh, lot of boys and full. Uh, all right, we hit that note. All right. <laughs> so, okay, taking, taking no credit from the beginning from where it came from. I didn't create the dance. I was, um, I was introduced to the dance. And when it, when it was introduce premature people are learning their own steps what to bring to the table so when i learned certain individual moves i started creating my own dynamics out of them i started putting more out of what move what people were doing i was transcending i was bringing more to the table as in changing the game there was a lot of style there was a lot of funk there was a lot of drops and you know it was called burning at the beginning you know people drops you know it, it was you know everybody's doing different things, helicopters on the floor, three-step, two-step, six-step, five-step, 10-steps, 12-steps. People started creating their own ideas. What I brought to the table was power moves. Power moves is head spins. You know, uh, my boy Spinner helped, helped invent some of the power moves that we all do today, Give him his respect. Uh, uh, Elio Perez, Spinner from Dynamic Rock, he created the 1990. Now, there was, a, there was a call out on that. Oh, you know, Ken Swift. Ken Swift invented them called 1990. But what he did, because he did it in Star Wars, right? We could get that footage. I'd like to show it to you. He would go top rock, and he'd put one hand, and he'd go like he's going to go and put his other hand, but he'll drop, boom, boom, and he go on his back, and, he, and he'd do a backspin. But he didn't spin on his hand. Spinner was the one that did the 1990. And when I seen that, I was like, yo, I was in this hallway in Queens. I was like, yo, bro, you got to show me that shit, go. So we learn from each other, you know, Dynamic Rockers, the 36 Avenue Division. Let's get that for the record, 36 Avenue Division. You know, Nelly Nell, Wavy Legs, uh, Spinner, Flexi, Quickie, Flip, Little Flippomatic, Flippomatic, you know, Nelly Nell, you know. So, you know, it's like, you know, nine or ten of us, but we learn from each other. And whoever was left behind, they didn't know too much. Like Ed Edison's brothers, they were younger. We taught them, you know, some of the steps, and they started creating a couple ideas for themselves, and it's, or they started getting the move in a good way. But as being uh, creators in the game and and bringing master craft to the table, 
you know, yeah, you know, uh, Wayne Liss definitely brought stuff to the table. We complete each other as a crew, as, as dynamic rockers. But, uh, you know, we embraced other other divisions when it came together because we were the main, the second division. But as other ones came, Mr. Glide came, we learned from each other and we express each other's energy together. And, you know, everybody has a story. Like, I'm not going to knock no one's story. I got my story. I got my receipts. But, yeah, Palm Moves, uh, I, 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 I would just do different than windmills, head spins with handcuffs behind my back, uh, head spins, uh, handcuffs in the front back. Uh, it was 1990s that Elliot went to elbow spins where you spin on the top of his elbow like this. Right, right. And then we got swirls when you stand on your forearm, your legs are straight up, you spin here. One-handed swirls, you know, windmills, you know, 10 different windmills before became halos. Halo 1, Halo 2, air tracks, a 360 off the floor. When you do a 360, you go back into a room, it's called an air track. People get the, the wrong terminology. The ICI's created the, 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 the ninja flare, which somebody else created the, the air flare. Hands down, I didn't create the air flare. Corey didn't read the air flare, but the air flare came from ICI's. He did half of that interpolation, he dropped. Somebody said, what about not dropping, what about kept going? And then once you do transition, it became an air flare. So a lot of palm moves that my crew, you know, brought to the table with other people too, like, you know, a guy named uh, Mr. Ed created the continuous backspin. Jojo created the backspin. You know, this is just proven facts, you know, but uh, the receipts are there, man. And I can't claim all the moves, but I'm doing the film coming out soon. You know, uh, you'll be hearing about it. But, you know, you know, some of the moves, how they would transition from the 70s, uh, from the 60s to the 70s, between 70. Six to seventy-nine headspins and windmills were out already, so that's the that's the fact. So I'm kind of throwing a lot in 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 uh, in this story tonight because I'm trying to say something. But you know, let it be known. I mean, when you see the film, what I'm doing, you can actually see. I can interpret by you me talking about. It, you can actually see the film and see how it transcend from there to here. So these are the receipts when you see everything put together. But yeah, Power Moves came out way early before the '80s. You know, a lot of kids overseas understand this. Back then, we had no social media. We had no Facebook, no Instagram, no Twitter, no no TikTok, none of that. Now you have that. So you see a lot of films up there. If all you guys, they were saying that you put, I'm not saying you didn't do it, but if you know that New York City is the mecca of hip hop and was, you know, you was that top B-boy, should have came to New York and stepped to the rocks. You, you should have been in those, in those ciphers and say, hey, I was one of good b-boys because if you were then you they would be in history i mean i'm not saying that because you're from another place it didn't happen but i see a lot of videos that it's hard to you know because you could take a video you could just change the date on it on the vcrs if you come to really think about it mm -hmm. but i'm saying back then there was no social media into actually when uh television came out 2020 uh, uh national geographic did did the, the the second battle in the world was the the Lincoln center battle that we just came out the other day I mean, um, you know, Star Wars was the first one, you know, those are the two, it was, a, it was in that, in that year, it was 81, you know, in the, the beginning, before the summer, USA, we filmed in USA for uh, one day for like six, seven hours. I'm still trying to see what's going on with that, some of that footage, because that's when you can see some of the transition moves that my crew dynamic brought to the table that was not shown because it was edited out. And that's because of politic purposes, I don't know, but, uh, you know, when you sign a contract with somebody, they're going to favor it to you and... That's what it is. But, uh, you know, the truth always comes out. People know it. The streets know it. The people that were there know it. But, uh, you know, eventually, it, it, hopefully I, I get my film out soon. People could just judge it for the sub. But it's just a story. I mean, some people's going to agree and disagree. This is the world we live in. You know? yeah. but, now, you, you, are you able to talk about the, the development of the head spin into breaking, mm -hmm. you know, and what that did for you? And yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so... You know, I made, I made a brand head spin, right? So this is from a picture when I first did the continuous head spin. It was in the carousel when I got my name Kid Freeze and I battled. He took off the shirt. The A girl named Donner, she took the picture when I was going to battle uh, Kid Freeze. So when I did that head spin, she actually caught it. And that was in the time, same time as the carousel day when I battled uh, the original Kid Freeze. So I made it into a clothesline. And this is the picture here. That's here. So, you know, I was so honored to have it, and it's part of my legacy. It's my history. 1978, 
Wow. This picture came from 1978. And that's the beginning of something that, uh, that I put together in time being as a, a businessman, as a creator, innovator, and just seeing how to incorporate my ideas into a business establishment because it's a hat brand now. I do hats, spin hats, all kinds for the people. So being part of the culture of hip hop and being part of the movement, you know, I started to say, let me become business aspect of it. And that's what everybody's doing now, being educated, learning the business, and, you know, get get the receipts what you pay for. Like, you know, I, you know, I'm glad I own the picture. I don't have to pay nobody for my own picture because, you know, some of these people, they got your pictures. Yeah, hey, let me get a let me get a license on that or how much I got to pay you. That's my, that's my image. But, you know, we wasn't educated that much. A few of us. I'm not talking for everybody. Right, right. But I was young. I was into breaking more than I could even think about business. I let it handle it. So I was making money over here. They made their money. But eventually in time, I started educating myself to learn the business. So I said, let me start getting a pay off for stuff in that, the energy I'm putting in. Everybody started getting paid. I mean, I, I have good communication with, with Henry Chiffon from Star Wars. Uh, I'm good with Martha Cooper, uh, Jamal Shabazz with the boombox picture that, that came out with the radio, which I had an opportunity to come out and stamp in 2015. They did 100,000 stamps with my face on it, this picture here. You know, and I was, I, it was on Mass Appeal Magazine, and it came on the Tats crew. Uh, two twins from Germany did it. They did it in the Hunts Point. These are the pictures here. I have all the receipts, just, you know, stuff that brought. But whoever think that, you know, B-Boy, you know, doing the best things I could do in life and trying to give it all I got to achieve these goals because God blessed me and opened a lot of doors for me. And I was so blessed to be around. And, and the people I was around, it was all about love. What happened to all that love, man? It's, everything became so mechanical. The money, contract. Before, it was about love, man. Let's go out and go to the park. Let's eat together. And let's just share that great energy that God gave us. It was called life. Right? What happened to it? <laughs> I don't know. You know, sticking with that that image of, right. of the head spin, right. you know, you you got a backstory, yeah. you know, about that, you know, and there's a there's an artist, a famous artist. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay, you yeah. Know, yeah. That took that image and did some work with it. Right, Talk, right. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, well, like I said, in the beginning stages, there's a lot of different story, but I used to go to, uh, like I said, junior high school, junior high school, two or four, and the story of Queen. I used to play handball, you know, I was into the handball, so I stayed stay in shape. So I met a friend, and uh, you know, and he's like, hey. Uh, I got a couple of parties you might want to go to. I'm like, uh, where are you at? I go, oh, it's a village. My friend's an artist. I said, what's his name? This is the 80s. Uh, Keith Heron. I'm like, oh, okay. He goes, yeah, we go to Rocks. He's at Tuna Box. He want to meet you. He's a great artist. So I got to meet him. He's living on uh, West 4th Street. Uh, I saw the 8th Street. And it used to be a pizzeria on this side. And the she was to play basketball. And all the handball plays every side, they would, they would gamble, playing handball. They'd put money up in the gamble. But he lived across the street from uh, West 8th Street on the second floor, top of Pizzeria. I, I walked in the building with him, my friend, and uh, we went upstairs. And some gentleman opened the door. Hey, this is Keith. Hey, nice to meet you. And I met him. He goes, hold on, Keith's in the back. He's doing something. I'll tell him you guys are here. He came inside. He came, hey, Keith Freeze, nice to meet you. And I met him, nice to meet you. And, uh, you know, he goes, hey, we're going to go to Roxy. You want to go? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, wow, that's cool. This is like, like um, I'd say about 82, 83 I mean, the picture has the date on it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's 82 or 83. I think it's 82. You can see it's on the picture here. But uh, I didn't see it into the second time I went. The first time, we just went out, and he showed me some of his paintings. Oh, that's cool. And I was young. I, I was a little cocky because I was like, you know, it's with chalk. He was doing chalk. He does dogs. He does little boys. You know, I mean, little sculptures, you know, with the chalk. He make faces. He make all kind of cool designs. I thought it was cool. Uh, you know, I was like, you know, but it's just chalk. I mean, I seen graffiti and it was something new to me. So I guess I, I'm not calling it, it was no good. I wasn't, it was something new to me. So I wasn't really, you know, something new. You have to take the time and like it. I mean, after a while, I started seeing, he was, he was all over. He was like all city, like all these graffiti riders. To get your name out there, graffiti riders, you know, when we used to go to the Bronx, uh, the four yards, you know, I used to be a lookout kid. I used to whistle anytime the cops come, but, uh, you know, they try to hit everywhere, top to bottom, buildings, any, any way you get your name, just to get your name out there. So he did the same thing. He went out to the subways. And look, at this picture here is doing on, on a cardboard, you know, where they put the advertisement. Right here he's doing the picture that he did of me. So the second week when we went to um, going back to the Roxy's, when I got there, my book goes, oh, he said he got something for you. I'm like, all right, cool. So I got there, and he's like, hey, I got something for you. So 
I'm like, well, okay, what? So he brings out this painting. And I was like, oh, it's cool. I didn't think nothing of it. You know, I, I seen graffiti, so graffiti really is coloring. This was very simple, but it was it was art. You know, I respect his art. No, don't get me wrong, but I never knew the magnitude of it later on. And every time some of these artists, the work they put in, they never get recognized until you pass away. They see the significance that you did, like the head spin, artwork, you know, poetry, building, structure. Sometimes it takes a long time for you to really make that mark that you, you mark the world. Like Michael Jackson, Prince. Once you're gone, you're worth millions of dollars. But anyway, my point is that, you know, he, get, he was giving it to me, and I have the painter here. And I, I, just, I just left it. I, I'm not going to carry that home. Then when I looked on the internet, you know, and I found out he passed away, and I was just doing my research. I do a lot of research. And I said, oh, man, that's the picture that he gave me. So my daughter said, I showed my daughter. I said, look, this guy did a picture of me. So I've been doing my research, and I, I Googled it. It's worth $2.8 million now. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, why you didn't take it? I'm like, you know, listen, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want to carry it. I, I, was, I was young, I was 13 years old. But, uh, yeah, so, you know. I did, I did experience a lot being a b-boy and learning a lot. You know, I got a beautiful family. You know, I got two daughters. You know, I got Apache, Tiger Lily, you know. And Patty, me and Patty had my daughter, uh, you know, came first. And, uh, you know, Patty used to be a b-girl too, you know. Right. I, that's how I met her. She was a, she used to work for Paper Magazine. Patty Morris, which is my daughter's mother. She, she uh, we met her. She interviewed me. She put me in magazines. You know, she used to live in the Lower East Side. And she used to ride like, she used to be a strong girl. She used to grab her bike up the stairs, fight fights. I said, yeah, girl, you're strong. She used to have a chain on. I'm like, wow, you can be strong, girl. So we became, you know, we dated, you know. She got me a couple of uh, interviews, and, you know, we started learning about computer graphics. I worked in the hospital, and, you know, it just uh, time took its course. And, um, you know, eventually we, we kind of, we, um, we drifted away, but we have a beautiful, you know, uh, we have a beautiful daughter, Tiger Lily, and then we have a sister, uh, Apache, but we're the best of friends, and you know we learned a lot about business. You know, I, I bought a computer. We started doing computer graphics. We came out of a company called B-Boy Headquarters, and we started printing shirts. You know, so you know each one teach one. We grew, we grew, and we started learning things. And she would learn, teach me things, and I, I was like, I was like, ah, I don't want to learn that. But you know, I was stubborn. I was young, stubborn, and I had to grow out of that and mature and grow. You know, because learning is is. It's fun once you learn things and you want to learn more things. But, uh, you know, yeah, I did experience uh, the painting with Keith Herring. And, you know, now, you know, it is what it is. But uh, if I can ever get my hands on it, that'd be awesome. But uh, <laughs> right now, it's like, you know, I'm just working on my brand, Headspin brand. You know, I'm, work, I'm coming out with this. I'm trying to do two, two, two to three films. I'm doing glasses. I'm doing sneakers. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, I'll get somebody to just look at my work and say, hey, let's, let's, let's do a deal, you know, so I can take care of my family. But. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was fun, um, the experience of meeting different artists. I met a lot of artists. Yeah. From Liberace, Tom Jones, I met a lot of people being a b-boy. Liberace. Yeah, man, I got a picture with him. I got it right here, like I said. It's a, it's a lot of things I experienced being a b-boy, you know, going to Africa, a lot. I've been through a lot, you know, never experienced that I would hit the magnitude that hard. And when I when I went overseas, I got more respect than, I, than when, when breaking in New York. It became saturated that people started like, eh, it's played out. But when it was played out here, I was traveling the world, man. I was in Africa, Europe. I was, you know, had an opportunity, you know, Mark Lebert, Mr. Freeze from Rocksteady, told me, yo, let's go, got a gig to Africa. So we went with Jeff Kutash. This is Jeff Kutash and I'm on the plane now, you know. So, you know, he became, you know, he told me a lot about, you know, growing as a man. He was like, you know, father figure because my father wasn't there. So at a young age, you know, he would guide me, but. You know, I seen life very fast. I grew very fast. You know, young age, had all the girls, you know. You know, you're a star celebrity coming from New York City, a B-boy in California and um, Africa and France. You, you, the magnitude is like, you, I went out there, I was like Michael Jackson. People were like, thousands of people. I was like, whoa. He was getting ready. We, we, we coming out the limo and we go into this building. Security, come on, let's go. We go. And it, 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 was, it was so incredible. And there's a couple other guys that I want to mention also. I don't know if you heard the song, Roxanne, Roxanne. Yeah. So I met a guy named Kango, rest in peace, because it was even my brother, and Ice, Dr. Ice. I was in 42nd Street. I was dancing one day, and uh, these guys came by, and we were dancing, making money. And I, Kango came up to me and said, yo, 
What's your name, man? I said, my name is Kid Freeze. Oh, man, nice to meet you. That's my boy, Dr. Isaac. He want to batter you. Oh, really? That's what I do, man. That's what I specialize in, battering. So he kind of he, he played a joke on his boy, Dr. Isaac. He's like, yo, you want the, the kid really want to batter you. So he says, uh, all right, you go first. So, uh, you know, he went down and did his move. I'm like, you sure that's it? And he goes, yeah, he got to go like that. I went down to Top Rock, Swipe, Windmill, Windmill, Headspin, 1990. I did a hollow plank, boom. And stood up. He goes, yo, you are bad. And he goes, yo. I said, what do you guys do? He goes, oh, you had a Houdini? I'm like, Houdini. Friend, oh, yeah, I like that. So I had to, so I bought it a couple of weeks ago. I used to buy vinyl. Friends. He goes, yeah, we dance with Houdini. We call it the Keystone Kids. Doc dies, can go. And he goes, we need a B-boy. So I was, I went to the Select Records, Chuck Rock, Select Records, record label. I met Full Force, Lisa Lisa. And they embraced me to the family. I met them. And I started doing shows with uh the Keystone Kids, which was later on became UTF4. Wow. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of history about it, being a B-boy. And, um, you know, I met Chub Rock. I met Sele Fred Minera was the owner of Select Records. They were on, uh, under the label. Uh, Full Force, Bo Lake, Lou. Right. And the whole, I met the whole family. I went to the house. And, you know, when I, I, I can recall that um, I went to um, Bo Lake, Bo Lake Lou's house in Full Force in Brooklyn, and I did Hesper. They're like, yo, that's crazy. And he got that voice. And they embraced me in love. I became family. And, you know, I, I, I still contact him to this day. And, uh, you know, we lost Kango. You know, he's a great brother. Uh, I'm trying to catch up. You know, I still got the numbers. I'm seeing if I could go reach out to the show love. But, uh, you know, we, we, we a lot of, a lot of uh, pioneers in, in this industry, I, I came across. With, you know, we, I met these people. I grew with these people. I stood with these people. We ate together. We lived together. We breathed together. We made it together. You know, that's the beautiful thing about hip hop. It unites people. You know, I just hope it stays like that because the love for hip hop, when we when we unite it, it's beautiful. When we when we when we divide, it, it, it's not it's not cool because it's just, it was, it's like taking a heart and ripping it in half. Right. You know what I'm saying? Keep the love pure. We all did it. We all older now. Let's 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 set a nice example for the kids. Let's keep it real simple. You know? cool. But uh, I just want to tell you that story because yeah. You know, That's was, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were cool guys too, and the, and the whole full force was very, very fun to be around. Like I said, I met a lot of people: the Rachi, Tom Jones, uh, Andy Gibb. I used to sit beers with him by the pool in Africa. Hey, King, get me a beer. And I met I met a group called Chicago, the group Chicago. Right, right. They gave me a sweatshirt. It was like 1984 in Africa. So I, I had an opportunity to go to Africa, and I just seen the world in a different perspective overseas. Remember, in the 80s over there it was rough. Yeah, it was right. rough, man. Apartheid. Yeah, yeah, we had, we had a, we had a, let me see, I could probably put it out, well, I don't know, it's, it's, it's so many years. Me and Mr. Freeze, when we went to Africa one time, and then when, when, when we did go to Africa, not one time, when we went to Africa, we were going to do a show in, the, in, in you know, our regular routine, we're going to the entertainment center to do a show. Mm -hmm. So we, we decided to have these blonde tails, remember when they had the curlies? Right. And the, so we had these, you know, so there's this Dutchman, because they call them Dutchmen, they're big uh, African Dutchmen, you know. A, a white man, but he's very tall. So we're coming, walking by his side. So he he was drunk. He started laughing at me. Ah. So Mr. Freeze says, "Yo, what, what's your problem?" And I'm like, "He says, I said, I said, Freeze, don't worry about. It. Yo, he goes, Yo, man, you better watch yourself." And then I think he went to swing at Freeze, and Freeze went back. And then he actually, um, what you call it? He actually, uh, he actually punched me and knocked me out. And then Mr. Freeze ran. But, you know, just to make a long story short, I don't want to go into a lot of details, but Mr. Freeze kind of, like, saved my life. I don't want to go into all the details, but it was a big incident that Mr. Freeze got locked up in Africa. And, you know, we, we, was, we was on contract, so they wanted to find out what's the story. So, you know, Mr. Freeze went hiding, and they found him, and he was one of the rooms, and, you know, he just said, hey, he hit kid. We had to defend ourselves. We're young. Look how big is this man? But, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a little... More than the story is now, but I don't want to put it too much. Of it. But I, I experienced a lot being a b boy at a young age and, and respecting what what God gave me as traveling the world, seeing other people's cultures, seeing my culture, and say, "Wow, I I I, I seen a lot. I got a lot. I lost a lot. I'm still here." And uh, you know, the world is beautiful. It's what you make it, really. You know? yeah. But uh, what country in Africa was that? Botswana, Sun City. The place was called Sun City. It used to be a, a entertainment like Atlantic City. Right. Oh, no, like Vegas, but it was called Sun City. You could Google it, and you see the whole island, Sun City. We was, we had our own rooms. I had my own suite, my cabana. You open it up, you see the mountains. It was beautiful, man. 
And, uh, you know, we, we, we just, we've seen life in a different perspective. We lived out for two and a half years. And then when we're ready to come back, I made a phone call to New York and I called uh, Mr. Guy from Dynamic Rockers and I gave him the, the platform to fill our shoes. Him and Wavy Legs came and they had to take on the show when we left. So they came, Mr. Mr. Jeff Kutash got, I get, gave him the information, they switched. And while we were leaving, they, were, they, they started going over there to do those shows and fill our shoes. So I gave them an opportunity, you know, uh, so that, you know, they could get an opportunity to get a shot of something that was available. I got it, so I said, let me let me show love to another brother. Let me let, help him out. And then he did, you know, he did. I mean, he has his own story about it. Uh, he did great with it. He came back, and I think he started his own business. And you know, good for him. Like I said, uh, you know, it's all about me, love, man. It's like, it's, like I said, I try to stay from the uh, from those dark spirits. Man, I like to have a light next to me. And when I talk about people, I never want to talk about nobody bad. You know, sometimes the darkness gets to you, but I just, I, I'm more showing love than you know, than just throwing dirt at people. I'm not like that. I'm a Aquarius. I'm like, I'm really friendly with everybody. When you get on my bad side, I get anybody else. <laughs> you know, you get the fire, you get the horns because that I'm only human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, yeah. Now, you also went on tour with Ken Swift? No, I never went to. No? No, just Mr. Freeze. Just Mr. Freeze? Mr. Freeze from Rocksteady went to Paris, France, 1996. We did, uh, we did a, uh, it's on YouTube. We're doing a workshop class. I'm doing windmills with a green suit on, head spins, swirls. You know, there's the, the YouTube is definitely, uh, of that footage, 1996, Mr. Freeze and, and Kid Freeze, Paris, France. There's a couple of stuff online that uh, that we did, but yeah, we taught kids, and it was uh, you know, first time I went to France, it was really nice, uh, you know, and we we explained about you know the art form of hip hop, the rapping, you know, the breaking, the windmill, the backspin, and you know, we explained to them, the, you know, the fundamentals of, of the dance, and people loving it. You know, I had a nice puma suit on, and uh, yeah, there's a few stuff online they could see. But yeah, me and Mr. Freeze, you know, he gave me the opportunity to travel the world, you know, coming from two different crews, you know, we put that, I'm sure he had his, he had his, uh, he had his, um, he had his moments with Rocksteady. I had my moments with Dynamic and, you know, he had an opportunity. He said, yo, kid, you know, he picked me. He said, yo, you dope B-boy, me and you could do this. And we became one, we became the Freeze Force, Mr. Freeze and Kid Freeze. And we not, we did a lot of shows in Vegas, uh, you know, I mean, in California. And we did shows in uh, Africa, France. You know, I went to the Radio Tron too. That's when Ice T was a DJ. He was good friends with Mr. Freeze. And Pop and Taco, rest in peace. I met him. Sugar Pop, uh, Pop and Pete. You know, uh, Bruno, another guy. You know, I met a lot. I met a lot of people during my my ventures of, of being a b boy. And I'm grateful. I mean, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen rich people. I've seen i seen the world for you know, in a, in a b boy's perspective, like having my glasses on, gazelles, and just seeing. The vision of the world in different perspective. Like coming from the Bronx, man, it was different from the Bronx. Tell you matter. Yeah. And some were worse. Africa was worse than the Bronx because you know, I guess because what they were going through. You know, it's a lot of racial thing going on in in Africa back then in the eighties. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of turmoil. But now I seen like, wow, you know, some countries have even worse. You know, we going through uh, burning down the Bronx, the gangs, the drugs. You know, and you know, all this confusion. But you know, somebody always got it worse, but you know, you see the world and you really respect it for what it is. And as a b-boy and seeing different things, you know, it made me a different person and, and looking at things different and being grateful. The word is great for everything I and to this day. And it's not about the jury, it's not the show off thing. It's just part of, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, wanting nice things, you know, but you gotta work for it. Right. That's right. it. If you work for it, you get anything you want. You could be anything you want. So that's why I tell the kids, gotta work hard. Be the best you could be. Be boy, be the best you could be. be. Be that best boy that you could be. Okay. <laughs> kind of sticking to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I want to back up a little. Okay. Bit. You mentioned a lot of B girls early mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Could you talk to me about the first B girls, uh, the the dynamic Rockettes? Rockettes. Okay. Who was were a... the first ones, and then follow up? Okay. There was uh, Lucille. You know, she's in this picture here. I have the picture. It's Lucille. Uh, it was Donna. And I forgot the other girl's name, but uh, those are the three girls that I first seen in one of a kind. That was the first club that I went to. They were the ones with the shirts on, and they got the shirts on the picture. Then later on, uh, Charlie Chaz's niece, uh, her name was Jessica, Rosie, and Jenny. They was the next three. So it was three, and there was three. God. So it was, like I said, and, uh, uh, you know, they were the second division, Jessica, Jenny, 
and Rosemary. Rosemary, she was a bigger as well. She came out in, in the Lincoln Center uh, picture with the Rocksteady and Dynamic Rockers, which I have that picture. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, they came, they, the first ones, they really didn't dance a lot. Like the second ones, the second ones did more that I noticed. You know, like Lucy used to hustle. She never break. She would just dance on the top, do a lot of hustling. Uh, the other two, I think they did the same. I, I didn't really see. I mean, I might be wrong, but what I can recall, the second three was really doing the floor stuff for work. You know what I'm saying? And trying to imitate, do the same thing the guys did in that in that sense. But overall, you know, they they all, all six of them are history. Uh, they're all good people, uh, and you know, it's part of their, their their childhood growing up. They, they, some people passes a face through. This is part of my life. I went through that journey. I went through this journey. Everybody has their own path. They come in, they come out. New people come in, they leave. New people come back in. But uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's that with the with the six B girls. <laughs> Got it. That's awesome. Different generations, but yeah, six, three and three came after. All right. The uh, when we talk about B boy anthems, mm -hmm. which is your number one, and any others that you know you think are important well definitely you know apache is like the the anthem of, of i mean that's the congas like that just rips you know it just it makes my heart on fire when you hit up you know the anthem then i actually was playing with it the other i was trying to sample in a different way because i was sad i do music too now and uh yeah you know it, it the apache the mexican it's definitely uh the two anthems that i love and uh let me see what else anything and definitely uh, the almond, the almond beat, the uh, the ones that uh, what you would call it, the uh, uh, what's it, what you call it, uh, the West Coast did uh, Ice Cube, straight out of Compton, boom, that beat, that beat is the drum that he sampled that from the Almond, the Almond Brothers, Got back it. in, I think that beat came back in the, in, in like I think 1916, 60 or 67, I'm not too sure the date. Well, that's another jump off beat when they spit, they sped it up and then they, they tuned it up, you know. I mean, break beats that I like, it's got to be very, you know, a boom back, you know, the uh, bass, guitars, you know what I'm saying? Something that makes your spirit jump. But Apache, you know, you hear that people go, oh, you know, Mexican, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know, it just brings the spirit out of you, you know. Right. Any kind of, especially new music out today, they, they have a lot of music. You know, there's this guy named right now that, I, that you know, I'm, I've been talking, his name is B-Boy Telly from Brooklyn. He, and he's a great producer. I just did a drop for him. He's like, yo, Freeze, thank you. I'm like, yo, bro, we, we got a 12. Uh, B-Boy Telly, shout out to you. We, I put you on the, on this documentary, man. He's my man. His beats are crazy. And he's making them. I'm like, yo, bro. And, you know, I mean, there's people doing production now where they're actually bringing their own ideas to life. And there's no... They don't do sampling. They bring drums in and beef them up, and they, they make a concept. You know, that's like back in the day. But now you have you have technology so advanced now that it, it's it's so way advanced that like ever seen. We're we're like we're like in space times right now. Right. I mean, you have apps now. They say, "Tell me how to make money," and and, and it tells you, you know, "Give me a proposal," and and, and, and it's scary. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like I said, when I when I when I started doing stuff back then. And I, I seen what was already there. I said, let me do future things. Let me do futuristic power moves. So I wanted to bring the power moves to the future. That was my aim. And, and like I said, some of the stuff I'm doing, I got pictures of me doing stuff that I was ahead of my time. And eventually when I do, you know, God's blessing, I do these documentaries, you know, you can see the pictures and the films, is, you know, and I could talk about them. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, the break beats, man. I mean, there's a lot of good DJs too. Like DP wants a good DJ, DJ Flag. And these are the guys that, 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 that cater to the new generation now. These are some of the top B boy, uh, top DJs. DP One, right. big shout out to DJ Flay, you know what I'm saying? G.I. Joe, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, these are guys that when you go to the event and they're there, B-Boys go crazy. Oh, I love that music. Let's go. And they, they go like, they ready. They go to war. Yeah. You know, when, when you got the music, it gives you that right texture of the movement of the dance. Because when you hear the drums, you start moving. Right. It's like a, it's the, it's the, um, what you call it, it's like, the, it's the energy from the frequency. Everything is frequency in life. So, like, you know, even like when, when we came over that bridge and we see Rock Steady, then, 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 get up and go to school. Uh, I'll let you, uh, i say you the, the, 
the, the song too. So when we get out of that bridge, that's what we heard. And, and that was the, they sampled Apache, but the rap on top of it, it was, it was amazing. It was something that amped us up. But uh, music is definitely an important part of uh, when, you, when you're a dancer and you're battling to keep, you know. I mean, uh, there's a lot of events I went to recently. There, there's some DJs that you're putting slow music on. They, they're, not, they're not popping. They're breaking. You got to put fast music so they can jump, flip, and show that frequency of the energy so it can transfer into that body spirit that's like come out the moves. But, uh, you know, there's a couple of DJs out there like, that I mentioned that are really, really... I love to go to the events when they DJ, but there's a lot of new DJs that I guess they need to be schooled on the music because the music is very important for breaking. If you're gonna battle, you need the music, you, know, you need the right music, like, you know. For sure. Very definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about a few battles, right? We've right, talked right. about the, you know, the small battle at one of a kind, one yeah. of the first battles, right, right? Right, right? We talked about United States of America, right, right. USA Skating, right. and, um, and we touched on the 1981 Lincoln Center battle. Oh, that was fun. Talk to me about who was there with you representing Dynamic? Okay. And who were you battling against? Okay, okay. So yeah, that just came out the other day. Uh, you know, uh, I see. I didn't get to see it yet, but uh, yeah, uh, we were all original Dynamic Rockers. You know, big shout out to my crew, Dynamic Rockers. You all, you all did a great job. Uh, it was, uh, it was. Uh, I mean, who was there? I mentioned who was there. Yes. Uh, I was. Uh, it was uh, Mr. Freeze, which is uh, George. Rest in peace. That's Mr. Glide's, uh, you know, brother passed away. You know, I'll take up my hat for you. Love the guy. Mr. Glide, you know, it's Mr. Glide and, and George. They're both brothers. Mr. Glide, uh, George was named Mr. Freeze. I became Kid Freeze. And uh, Kid Freeze was there. I have a picture. This is Kid Freeze here. And Wavy Leg, Spinner, Flip, Flippomatic, uh, Icy Ice, which was Little Glide that, that time. I have a picture of him, you know, getting down. And uh, wavy leg spinner, you know, said a couple, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, Nully, no, I don't think Nully was Nully Nully. I'm not too sure. Charlie Chaz, Eddie Ed, uh, Sugar Bear, Je Jessica, Rosie. We had a little mascot too, a little little kid that when he went out, the crowd went crazy. Ah! Right. So we we had a lot of different things that we brought to the table when we battled. We had routines. We had a little. We had the first little mascot, little guy. We had some girls. And it was a significant battle, uh, you know, uh, you had a lot of, we were all original, but I want to just get, for the record, Rocksteady wasn't original, because they brought a little left from Seven Deadly Sins to battle me. This is for the record, because uh, if you want to talk about who won the battle, I mean, uh, let's keep it 100. You know, it was three different crews versus Dynamic, and we still, to my eyes, we won the battle, no matter what, no matter what you say. I said, I'm back, and I'm happy for everything that I accomplished through, through, through God's blessings, but, uh, you know, you can't have two, three different all-star crews that battle one. First of all, if that was professionally, you guys will lose because you, you it's a forfeit. You're taking outsiders to fight your battle, not you fight your own battle. That's how deadly we were. We were awesomeness, man. My crew was awesomeness. Like we, we battled everybody, you know? but I'm, I'm going to keep it 100. They had some great members in Rocksteady. You know, there were some members there, Ken Swift. Hands down, that kid was nasty, man. That, that dude was a problem. I mean, he had his own, you know, moves, and, and very, I respect him. We, we're good brothers. I love them. Ken Swift, uh, you know, we battled a couple of brothers too in Star Wars. I was trying to see what happened to that footage. I mean, he brought it. He brought Some of them came hard. Some of them, you know, didn't have a lot of moves. But the guys that came hard, I, I love that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go-getter. Like, I, I look for the guys that's most aggressive. Let's go. Kenny was aggressive. Kenny was, he was a beast. He still is a beast. God bless him. Big shout out to Ken Swift. Uh, you know, rest in peace, Frosty Freeze. He brought good ideas to the table. He brought, you know, charismatic flips, you know, character. You know, there's there's quite a few of them, you know. My partner, Mr. Freeze, was, uh, you know, brought a lot. You know, he popped. He, he did uh, popping. He did locking. He he broke, you know. And he, he, was a, he was a great b-boy, too. His style, you know. I mean, I give it all to them. I'm, I'm not going to just point. They all was a good crew. It was We just had different energy. Got it. So you have Rocksteady. You had Little Lep from the Seven Deadly Sins. Sins and IBM, Incredible Breakmasters. Three crews versus one crew, Dynamic Rockets. And who wrapped IBM? Uh, it was, um, oh my God, what's his name? Omingo Rock. And, oh my God, I, 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 gotta, I gotta get the name. Oh my, I, I can't remember his name. His name is, oh my God. I know it was, it was uh, an outside was uh, Mr. Freeze and Junie June. They battled 
uh, IBM was, they were, they were, they were up rockers. They were called IBM because Rocksteady didn't have no up rockers. So it was Mr. Freeze of our crew. I mean, uh, Mr. our Mr. Freeze, mama, because they had our Mr. Freeze too. Our Mr. Freeze's name is George. That was Mr. Glass' brother in Junie June battle. Uh, Mingo Rock and Domingo, something like that. Two guys, I don't remember the names, but they battled him. And if I can find a picture, I'll give it to you, you can put it on. And, you know, they needed to represent the elements of up rock because they had no up rockers. So they had to hire them to get down rock steady to battle these guys. Little left came to battle me. And it went on. Like I said, we did what we did. We were all original. You know, we had a conversation one time. And I had I talked to Mike Holmes. He goes, we got? one time I, I talked to Mike Holmes. And I, he asked me, were you guys all original? I'm like, yeah, we were straight original. We battled everybody by ourselves. We didn't need no outsiders. That's to show you that we were warriors. We, we didn't need nobody. We were the... Uh, dynamic warriors that's what we were who wants it come we go everywhere we battle everywhere but it was one crew we didn't get no outside we were also one crew you know when when, when you have to get other people that means that there's, there's a problem yeah. dynamic warriors they're dangerous oh my god we got to get more arsonists we can't you know that's where it goes to show like right. you could anywhere you're playing the lakers you got to be the Lakers. you can't go get you know the celtics and you can't get other people in the team because then it's a forfeit right right so you let me know who won the battle, but I'm saying we get the footage out and you can see the whole battle. You see for yourself. The Palm Moves was started transcending 100% between 70 and 79. The Palm Moves started inventing. Right. You know, and a uh, majority of them came from Queens. And I'm going to show you the receipts on them. But uh, yeah. like I said, a lot of people has their story. I just want to put mine out there. But, you know, big shout out to Rocksteady and all the other crews, Nice and Nasty, um, you know, uh, Stone City crew, uh, you know, Scrambling Feet. You know, there's 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 a there's a lot of crews out there that uh you know don't get recognition. Nice and nasty, um, you know you know you had the ball busters, you got incredible breakers. You know my brothers that you know I'm through I I, I became cool cool brothers with him. Rest in peace by my brother Flo. He brought us together because we you know we had a little beef back then. But Chino Brian, incredible b boys there. They you know we had problems with them and those kids that you know they they they, they were nasty. You know, we have we had a lot of stories. I have a lot of stories. I me battling them too, but uh, you know, give props where it's due. And they have a nephew called Josh. You know that he came out of that family. The Davillas, yo, Josh is nasty. He's like, yo, he did shows with Janet Jackson, like, yo, you know, you got, you know, it's a lot of people that we like all we all together. But you know, everybody has their crew. The the floor lords from Boston, El Nino. You know what I'm saying? Right. He's going to the Olympics. Like we we all connected. You know what I'm saying? But uh. You know, big shout out to Incredible Breakers in the family, you know, definitely bring brought me to the table. And, uh, you know, you got Sammy also, rest in peace, Eddie, one of the brothers passed away. He made us become friends and stuff. I got pictures. I, this is one of the pictures here that, you know, we all together. And he made us become friends because, you know, sometimes breaking, you know, brings you to different, it makes you, it, it makes you a certain way. I mean, not that it, it happens, but sometimes it happens, but. Thank God nobody got hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because we, we came times where, hey, we were ready to go to war, like physical fight. Mm -hmm. But thank God, that, you know, that didn't happen. But, uh, you know, we, 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 we grew out of that. We came to make peace, and we became to let our story be known. Nobody got hurt. Right, right. <laughs> thank God. But, uh, you know, and, you know, they were down with the ball buses. Ball buses, everybody know ball buses. They, and then they take Zulu Nation beats. I mean, there's a lot of stories that people don't know about. Right. Now, we let them, like, this is the real story. Like, they don't know about history. This is the true history. Well, I watched that documentary yesterday. Okay, okay. You know, and, um, you know, I, I don't have any sides, but yeah. Michael Holman did say mm -hmm. in regard to who won the battle, right. he says, well, you know, Rocksteady did have, in, in his words, yeah. ringers. Yeah, yeah, ringers. That's what he said to me in that conversation. You he know? says, that's not cool. I didn't know that because we had a conversation. I told him, you know, the truth, we're all original, man. Like, and like I said, I respect Little Left, I respect uh, IBM. I met them and they, they told me, yeah, you know, legs came and you know, for the record, yo, he hired us to battle with him and put on Roxetti shirts. But in, in all reality, man, they, they were ringers, exactly. But the truth is the truth. Like I said, everything that is from, from the dark will come to the light. And that's just, that's the fact. That's what happened. And let the world decide on the, on the documentary right now we're doing and their opinion. Everybody has their opinion, that's right, it. Right, right. But the truth is the truth, you know, cause everybody has their opinion and that's just part of life. You judge it. Everybody makes their own decisions. That's it. <laughs> can, can you talk? Were you at the uh, nineteen eighty four Roxy's battle? Roxy's battle with who? Oh, the dynamic breakdown. Yeah? No, I was yeah. in Africa. You were in Africa yeah, on tour right. that time. Yeah, I was like eighty something. Yeah, yeah. It's when I died. 
the dynamic break is stepped in. You know, that's another right. that's another whole world. But uh, you know, they, they came later on. I mean, the only guy that was in Lincoln Center that was there at that time was Spider because he did the Spider and Victor did the bridge and I did the Lotus. It's on the film. He did the right. Spider and me and me and Spider went underneath. I got on top of uh, Mr. Guy's chest and then I jumped off and I me and Spider made a, a double Spider. And I think it was shown in, in uh, the film yesterday, but right. but yeah, like I said, uh, that came later. I was in Africa, and uh, yeah, uh, I you know I heard about it, seen it, you know, New York. You know, I was started started traveling. Like I said, I, I enjoyed traveling. I was so lucky. I was like, wow, I was I was I was blown away. I was traveling. I'm like, damn, I'm a young kid, <laughs> seeing a lot of different things. And uh, d during your time breaking as a as a b boy, you named a lot of a lot of clubs. Mm -hmm. You know, we just want to make sure you know. We get all the clubs that that existed during your time break. Right. You, okay. You know who, where they were. You know what those clubs were. Like Roseland, we used to go to Roseland. Baby J, used to do that, Roseland, Ten Eighteens, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Club Underground, Fourteenth Street, Street, Club Fresh, uh, the, 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 the Lamblight. The Limelight. Yeah, the Limelight. Yeah, yeah. It should be a church. It was kind of right, right, right. <laughs> My man, D, uh, Steven Zoy used to DJ there. He used to invite me to come. Uh, were, his brother was down with the Brooklyn Zoo crew. They some rappers and B boys, mm -hmm. and that's what uh, Steven Zorn introduced me to Fresh Kids in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. which also Furious Rock was a part of Dynamic Rockers because Chiba Rock and Bamboo, Bamboo, his brother, rest in peace, Bamboo and Chiba Rock made up Furious Rockers. When I went out there, I like oh, Furious Rockers, and I saw you. I met this crew out there. He goes, Yo, that's my crew, Kid Freeze, big, big guys to uh, Chiba Rock. I have a picture of him. This is the picture of him here, and uh, his brother named Carlos. He passed away. And they were furious rockers. They were they were they were, they were real tough dudes, man. But they we you know they, I met them in in, in Queens at 36 Avenue. Their father used to be in the building, and I told them how to break. I seen them have jackets on that uh, filthy was a crazy homicide. That's some I can't remember what gang, but they went to gang and they went to how to break. When I seen them, oh man, we got our problems with that. <laughs> Yo, what's your name? My name is Chia. So what's up, Nike? Like, my name is Chia. Well, you dynamic rockers, yes. And we became friends. Goes, what do you do? And I started. I said, Yo, come to my. Home. Went downstairs to the whole ass zone. Yo, I want to learn. So I taught them, and you know they became dynamic. And I got pictures with him. And he's doing, you know, he got a shirt on. But yeah, man, a lot of a lot of people, uh, you know, came through dynamic. And, and if it wasn't for dynamic, you know, we always showing up to everybody. We always try to embrace the, the communities and always show, especially like Kick Live. Big shout out to Kick Live right now. He's doing it big for Dynamic Rockers, and I salute him. He's doing a great job. This is a picture of me, him, Eddie, and, and his baby. You know, he was holding it up. And, um, you know, he, he's doing a great job. And the whole transition of Dynamic Rockers from the 70s to the 80s to now, like, I, I give it up to everybody. Mr. Glide, great job. Kick Live, great job. Eddie, yeah, great job. Sugar Bear, great job. Nelly Nell, rest in peace. I love you. Thank you for bringing me to Dynamic Rockers. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. And I, I most of all, I thank God, my moms, my father, my, my family. Everybody supports me. But, uh, you know, uh, it was all about loving. But we were, we were warriors in what we did. We love breaking, man. We were like, we took it to the heart. Okay. I don't really think we ever lost a battle, honestly. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm trying to think about it. The only battle I lost in my life was a car accident. But, you know, they have nasty kids. I'll give it to them. I went all around the world. I seen a lot of nasty kids out there. It just makes me sweat. I'm like, damn. You know, my mother, bro, right? and every time I go, you get down, I said, not yet, brother. I'm not ready. <laughs> but uh, you are nasty. I mean, I met, I met some of the, some of the, uh, some of the top B-boys. I met Gravity. He's going to Olympics. We got you. Gravity. Victor from Florida. You know, he's going to Olympics. Sonny. Big shout out to Sonny. You know, a lot of people I met. It, and, you know, all I can tell, man, enjoy the journey because this, this is your time. Your time, enjoy it, suck it up, take pictures, you know, save your money, and, and you know, it, this is your time. Everybody has their time in life, you know. Now it's Kick Live, KBL, you know, support KBL, and you know, it's everybody. Like keep breaking league. Keep breaking league, yeah, and he's doing a great job. Like I said, I, I'm going to go stop by and give him a couple of gifts for his office, and uh, you know, just show love. And like I said, man, we, we all done it together, man. It's not just one. We did it as a whole, as a, you know, as a full whole, because... We all played a part of it, you know. In the book, there's a lot of pages in the book. Right, right. That's what makes the book. So people don't realize it's not just one person. But like I said, man, I should love to everybody. Everybody made me why I'm today, not just myself. But, you know, I, I give my my colleagues, my rivals, I give them respect. Yo, thank you for making me who I am today, Kid Freeze. Was it for you trying to battle me and trying to push my button to battle you, I wouldn't be as great as I am today because you made me become who I am. And I'm sure I made them become who they are.
right. and vice versa. One hand wash the other, two hands wash the face. And, you know, each one teach one, like they say. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of great people out there. Some people are not, but uh, we pray for them. And uh, like I said, the Olympics is going to be interesting. I don't think they're going to have it for a long time. I think it's going to be very short. I think it's just this year. And then that's it. That's what I heard. I don't know. But, you know, embrace the opportunity, man. I mean, gravity is dope. El Nino is dope. Victor from Florida is dope, you know. Uh, it's a lot of Sunny. She's from, uh, she's from I think, Queens. I'm not sure. Sunny Choi? Yeah, she's, uh, I met her, you know. And uh, everybody else, if I'm not met you, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I can remember so much people. But, uh, you know, good for you, man. Enjoy the journey. Embrace it. You know, you're going to travel the world. You know, from there, you might get endorsements. You're going to do a couple of commercials. And save your money. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if I knew what I know now, and I spent a lot of money in my life. Travel, I travel the world. I would spend lots of my gave money away too, because that's the heart I had. But uh, you know, embrace the moment, you know. And um, you know, I'm sure that your parents are happy for what you've done, your accomplished. But let me tell you, to be in that in that position, they worked hard, man. I gotta give it to you. I know what it is to be a power move, uh master, master these power moves. It takes a lot of dedication, a lot of sacrifices. Didn't go with the girlfriend. Didn't go hang out. And these guys are smokers say, go smoke weed. I was just training, training, training. So eventually it was hard, and then it became easy. It smoothed out. Like Bruce Lee said, water could flow or it could crash. So be water, my friend. Flow. Just, you know, keep training, and you get to your destiny. It's all about the more you put in, the better you get. And that's what I did. That was my life. I'm going to be a B-boy. You're not going to make money. My father said, oh, my God, my son's making more money than me in a week. <laughs> I made a lot of money breaking, man. I made a lot of money. I mean, it was fun, and the experience was, was amazing. It's, it's priceless, you know, what I've seen in, in the world. So I tell these people, just, you know, be mindful. Take care of your body because your body's your temple. You know, what you put into Absolutely. your body, as you get older, man, you start, you know, like, like you know, I've learned about eating seeds and, you know, God gave you, gave us a, uh, Right, the right foods is the green foods, and, and it's what's what's in like you know you do your history like meats and all that. That's not nothing for our body to digest. That's not you know we nobody. God gave us fish. Fish is cool because he he gave it to everybody, but seeds and plants that's what cures diseases. Turmeric, ginger, cayenne pepper. You know I take ginger in the morning with cayenne pepper, lemon, coconut water, and I take a shot when the minute I get up and I go to the bathroom. But it, it boosts your you know gets you hype. You know what I'm saying? But it burns the fat out. You know what I'm saying? It's because you when you eat when you eat meat, rice, and beans, and then you eat five minutes later, if you don't digest it, when you get older, people get fat because they don't work out. You know? But when you're young, you working out, you don't you don't eat as much. That's why they, they don't have fat, they don't really eat like that. They put more dancing into the food. When I was practicing, I didn't eat. I fast for three, four days. I'm like, you ain't nothing I don't want to eat. Look at my head spin. Look, look, look at the 19. Look at the elbow spin. Look at this. Look at the air track. How look at the mag magnetic line. Because I was eating what I wanted to become. So you put into what you want to become, and you know your body will, will adapt to that. Remember, because to be to do head spins and all these dynamic moves in the air, and they they, they do three sixties in the air now. They got a kid from overseas. I forgot his name. Uh, they doing the one handed air flare now. They do air flares one handed, do a three sixty, catch it, push it again three sixty, catch one hand. Call it one handed air flares. How power moves has transcended. It's retarded from 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 the idea from the seventies from what it is today. These kids, I mean, you got B girls doing that body, you know. Like if you look at it to the now, all you see is breaking, 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 breaking all over the world. It's a global, it's a it's like it's it's like the biggest thing in the world are breaking, and it's healthy, mm -hmm. you know. But remember, it's healthy, but some of these people are having a lot of uh, you know not the right chemistry for their body. If right. you break it, you got to watch those energy drinks. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta watch what you eat to stay in shape, because you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff out there that's, that won't agree to your body, and when you using that energy that much, you have to put the right nutrients back in your body so you can get that the energy again. But uh, you know, just just be aware of your surroundings and, and try to, you know, learn, educate yourself to eat the right food. There's good foods out there that gives you that energy. And I've been doing. I feel great. That's why I'm so hyped up right now because I have, like I said, the turmeric, ginger, and coconut water. Coconut water is, is better than water itself. I, I did a research. I'm like, okay. So I'm trying to, I'm 56 years old. Next year I'm 57. You know, and I'm trying to come back and do a little dancing for you guys and show you what I still got left. The last, <laughs> I should call it Kid Freeze coming back, my last go down. But I got some stuff to bring to the table. You guys are going to be blown away. But uh, get ready. Get ready, yeah. But, uh, you know, 
Big shout out to Dynamic Rockers, KBL, and uh, you know, congratulations on this document that came out, Rock City and Dynamic. You know, we definitely uh, can't forget where we came from, but uh, you know, in all levels of, of respect, it came from all of us. We all did it together, and uh, you know, just thank for all of you for helping me part, be part of this voyage in, in hip hop. You know, what I'm, I'm honored, uh, and it's just we lost a lot of people too along the way, but. Uh, you know, we, we didn't forget you, Nelly Nut. I love you. Rest in peace. Eddie Ed from Incredible Breakers, we love you. New Wave, we love you. You know, Float, we love you. My, my stepfather, Ray. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotion right now. Ah, uh, Mr. Freeze from Dynamic Rockers. You know, we, we lost a lot of people, but, yep. but uh, you know, we're here. We're fighting for the for the legends not here. We we salute y'all. We keep your memory alive. Definitely, definitely. You know, but uh, gotcha. hey, listen, realness is better than being fake. You know, I'm good. I'm good with real tears. I'm a real man. So real men's cry. I, mean, I got a real heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I give you the truth, man, though. Nothing but the truth. It's the truth. So my knowledge is what I can recall and give you 100% realness. When people know me, they know I'm real. And I, I have a good heart. I try to show love to everybody. But uh, yeah, big up to everybody in the world, man. You know, just wake up every day, be blessed, and make, make your day be fully to you. And try to make somebody feel good for the day. Don't always put it on you. Just say, let me make somebody else feel good today. They might need help. It's very important. <laughs> what does the future of breaking look like to you? Well, at this point in life, well, you know, the, the, the Olympics is one thing accomplishing, which is good. Uh, you know, well, like I said, uh, big shout out to Kid Glide. He's doing KBL. Kids that need to know about the history of our breaking and knowing the moves and learning the energy, how to become that great dancer, B-boy, you know, you, you, you know, he's, he has a school, he's teaching kids and they're really good. He got, he had a nice, he got a nice squad. I mean, he's incredible. I mean, I don't know how he takes time to do all that. I mean, he's a family man. He has a school. He travels the world. I mean, he has a lot on his plate. I, I salute him. That's a lot. I mean, he travels. He's a family man. He has kids, you know, and uh, he got a school. I mean, that's a lot, you know, to juggle those hats. Big shout out, Kid Glide. You're doing it. God bless you. I'm praying for you, lady. You know, whatever you need from me, I'm here, man. We're family. We're family. We definitely, I'm always going to be dynamic from the heart. But, you know, um, I just, you know, just stepped away. And, you know, I, I'm. they need me. I'm there. But Street Masters, my crew, we're doing events. We're going to start doing events in New York City for the future of, of my crew, Street Masters, which was established in 1984. And, uh, you know, Triple Seven, you know, Deaths and everybody, you know, that is all over the world. A troll, you know, there's a lot of guys in street masters. But I want to do another documentary on that to all my, my crew, street masters. But uh, big shout out to the street masters, Elmo Paranoia. You know, I, I love my crew. You know what I'm saying, Kid Dynamite, B Boy Soul, Pops. But uh, you know, like I said, man, everybody has a story. Everybody has a crew. But I mean, I, I established a crew that uh, you know, I kind of walked away, and I, and I never gave them the time to let them know who I am, and they they, they kept it going. That's what's crazy about it. You know, when I left them in Florida. They kept it going, and then they honored me to go over there, and it was so big. I was like, yo, this is what you built. I'm like, man, we got guys in Cali. We got Troll in Spain. We got Triple Seven Death. We got Parano in New York, Elmo, and they all dancing so crazy, man. They, my crew, I love them, man. And I love Dynamic, like I said, but I think, you know, talking to some of my, my people that I know, they, yo, it's time you do your thing. You, you built that. You know, I built, I, I was part of the legacy of Dynamic Rock. I will always be. But it's somebody else to kind of time to take over. Like this is your time, right? But my legacy is still in it. I can never be erased. Got it. But it's time for me to have a new chapter in my life. Got it. And we'd like to end all of our oral histories mm -hmm. with one question. Yes. What does the Bronx mean to you? The Bronx was uh, the Bronx means to me uh, history. Uh, Depression, hardship, hard work. You know, poverty, you know, to make it out, you know, alive, you know, not caught on drugs or getting killed, murdered, um, trying to build a better life. What it is today is so incredible. And, uh, you know, it's, it made me who I am today. Being from the Bronx, born in the Bronx, everywhere I went, oh, are you a Queens boy? Nah, but I was born in the Bronx. But it's not where you're from, it's where you're at, but, uh, you know, it was like I said, they were burning down the Bronx, man. It was really rough, man. We were going through a transition that, you know, 
he probably was going to make it or he was going to break us. And a lot of people choose to choose hip hop as a uh, safe, safe, uh, safety belt to get him out where the situation it was. Right. Because my father was, you know, I mean, we were, we were struggling. We, we were rough, man. I mean, there's a funny story I could tell you now before I close it. I was sleeping one day. My mom came to check on me and she turned light. There was a big rat on my chest. She says, don't move. You know, so right. close the story with a funny story. I was in the front seat and, and a big rat slept right on my chest. My mom said, oh my God. I called my father, hey, you just got to, hey, give me that bat. He said, stay still, smack the rat, big rat, man. But, you know, you see that in the Bronx, rats, you know what I'm saying, and everything else that comes with burning down the Bronx and, and you know, people getting robbed. And, you know, we, it was tough times in the Bronx, and it just changed completely, which is good. But uh, you learn from the struggles. Right. Bronx, you know, big up to the Bronx, they, they went through a lot. You know, I can't speak for every other brother. I'm sure they have their story. But for the Bronx, I was born in the Bronx. You know, my pop wanted a better life for me, and uh, I wanted a better life for myself too. And then something that I didn't think, something that I didn't think would come to existence and to be a career, to be a b boy and actually get paid for it. My father was like, "You're not gonna go nowhere, Dad. You're not gonna make money." I proved it wrong. Coming from the Bronx, the transition moving to Queens and stuck to my dream, going worldwide around the world, how global hip hop is not breaking. Yeah, Kid Freeze, Headspin, yeah, yeah, I brought, you know, I'm blessed to come from the Bronx and represent all five brothers in New York City, not just the Bronx, but hip hop is a, is a New York thing, and uh, we all learn from each other, man. If we just keep loving and just giving people respect and grow as a unit, instead of division, it'd be a better place to live in. I love you. Bronx, New York, I'm back. I pray for you guys. Stay with the peace, man. Throw the ego out the window because that's what kills everything. Division kills. I love everybody. Thank you for this opportunity. I got a little emotion because we hit a lot. Of, we hit a lot of point notes growing up as a kid, you know. But uh, definitely, man. Kid Freeze, yes. Clemente Moreno. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate you being here. Peace. Peace. Yeah.